following show contains adult content. It's not our intent to offend anyone, but we want to inform you that if you are a child under the age of 18 or get offended easily, this next show may not be for you. The content, opinions, and subject matter of these shows are solely the choice of your show hosts and their guests, and not those of the Entertainment Network or any affiliated stations. Any comments or inquiries should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for listening. Hey ho, what's up everybody? Welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, bringing you the good times in music, fashion, pop culture, and entertainment. We have a fantastic show for you guys today. I'm really excited about it. Um, but before we talk about it, let's say hi to my cool, outrageous man about town, co-host Mr. Hey, Ron excuse Russell. Excuse me, but I'm kissing my dog who I love more than life itself, my Astro. Look at Astro, you're on television. This show is starring Astro. Look at how cute he is. Star, look at Astro. So I wish his fur would, his hair would grow longer. We cut him down. He doesn't look like him. I like it when he's all curly and fuzzy. Get it'll down be, now. It'll be soon. No, get down. It'll be soon. So we got a great show for you guys today. Um, we have two phenomenal actors coming on. The first one coming on today is Jameson Newlander, who was actually on the show June 15th, 2011. Um, so it's been a long time since we've talked with him, and I'm looking forward to having him back on. And then we have Greg Mulaby coming on, who basically has worked with, like, every Hollywood icon that there is, practically. He hasn't and, worked uh, with me yet. He hasn't, but he's going to be on the show right now, so that's, in a way, working with you. Well, maybe. <laughs> and he's calling from New York because he lives in New York. Lucky, um, lucky. So it's going, to be a, it, it's going to be a lot of fun, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Um uh, we might as well get our like some of our other stuff out of the way real quick. We want to thank everybody for tuning in every week. Last week's show is doing really, really well. Um, we also got named, I think, the twenty number twenty three on the list of the bet because our podcast is longer. Most people have you know fifteen to forty five minute podcasts and stuff. So our our podcast is two hours, and Feedspot named us number twenty three of the top two hundred podcasts that are over two hours. So I guess there's lots of them, but like we're in the top twenty three. And we've also hit uh, back, we're number like uh, eight in the UK again. So uh, we're hitting all the charts. Um, you can listen to us on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music, YouTube, Google Podcasts, Radio Public, TuneIn, Pandora, and Amazon Prime. Yay! And uh, uh, I'm happy to announce, yay, I got my contract uh, for Clown Motel three what's the rest of it it's clever now i forgot it's clown motel three something we're shooting in august right yeah august? We're sh and we're shooting august 14th so we're going to be working again i play general milan and i gather my soldiers together and we go out into the desert to clown motel the spooky clown motel and we kill all those killer clowns so be fun. i'm excited Joe Kelly is doing a great job with the script. And we get to actually go to Clown Motel this yes, time. Yes, we'll we haven't ever actually been, even though he was in the last right, one. I, we didn't I, go to the I Clown shot Motel here in California. In LA. But we're going uh, to, uh, what did I say? Yeah, we're going up to Nevada to Clown Motel. It's a spooky, haunted, uh, it's really haunted, so they say. And you know, I'm so psychic, but I'm sure that somehow I'll get a. A happening of some kind. We have to go up a little so you don't chop off your head and your beautiful you hair. Don't chop off my head, you son of a And gun. your beautiful okay. hair. My beautiful hair. <laughs> Yay! So it's going to be fun, you guys. Uh, also, for anybody looking for something to watch, that new uh, show on Peacock with uh, Sam Neill, uh, the Apple something. I don't know the name of it, but I watched the whole thing, and it's pretty good. Um, I found it very interesting, and it was different. I thought it was going to be similar to that staircase one, but it was very different. But it's I enjoyed very cute, it. You know that? Thank you. If I wasn't with you, I'd pick you up. Okay, good. I really would. <laughs> if I wasn't married to you, I'd pick you up because you're cute. 
We have lots of stuff. Cool. Really cute. Thank you, honey. You're gorgeous. So, really all right. So, sweet. so we want to say hi, Isn't Lady Lake. Cute? Lady Lake is in the chat room too. People are just starting to show up. B Claudia just showed up. We want to say hello to B Claudia. B Claudia, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, and one more thank you for. Working. Don't say what because we don't want people to know that. Just right. say thank you. Thank you for thank you for <laughs> thank you for everything you do for me. Yes, B. Claudia, you're a rock star. Lady Lake, hello, hello. You no, know, B, you should come to California or New York or Florida, wherever we wind up. Uh, you know, you haven't. Have you ever been to the United States? Actually, have uh, you ever been I'm to not the sure States, she has. B. Claudia? But B. Claudia, so we were at the premiere for Marcel Waltz's film *Brute* 1976. Oh my god! And the investors god. and the investors for his film were from Cologne, Germany. And they invited us to visit with them when we go to Cologne, Germany, to shoot Psionic Rush. Um, and so, no, she's never been here. She said, thank you so much. So we're going to see you sometime because we're coming to Cologne, Germany, to shoot this movie. Yeah, how far are you from Cologne? She's 20 minutes, she said. I oh, think she 20, told me, like, 20 minutes? From the Cologne studios? Yeah, so we're going to be there. Because, and then we're going to Bern. No. But Germany, Bern. B-U-R-N or B-E-R-N. What's in there? What's there? Uh, that's where the studio is. No, it's in Cologne. It's called Cologne Studios. Yeah, I know that, Cologne. but we're going to Bern first. And then Bern is, in, Bern is one of the oldest towns, spooky and all little uh, chateau very weird. I didn't know that they were going there. I think we're doing some exterior shots at Bern, and then we go to Cologne for the interior And then shots. we're going to Port Portugal, right? Isn't we're going to you? Portugal. First, yes. we're going to Portugal. Then from Portugal, we go to Bern to shoot whatever. And, and then, then we go to Cologne. To work in and then studios. I'm flying with Jimmy from there to Italy. Oh, B says Bern is in Switzerland. <laughs> no, but it's not Bern, B. Uh, it begins, right with a, begins with a B. Bon, Bon. Maybe Bon. Maybe bon. It, it's outside of Cologne. <laughs> anyway. It's sort of north of Cologne. We're going to see you, though, sometime in the next, hopefully, year, B, because we're coming. Right, and then we'll go to dinner. And then I go to Italy to visit my family in Genoa with Jimmy. I like love it. And then home. So I think it's so much fun. Uh, we're going to have a good time with it. Um, the only thing is, my dog, how am I going to live without Astro? I'm going to have a nervous breakdown. If I don't kiss my dog every day a thousand times, I'm not a happy camper. And they said we could take him. But somebody said he has to go in quarantine. And I don't think so. Because Devin, Ron Moss's wife, has a little baby, and his name is uh, Prince. And she took him to Italy and all over the country. There's no way that Devin would ever be separated from but Prince. But Italy might be different. No, but we're going to have Devin and Ron on the show. And when they come on the show, we'll talk about it with Devin. Because she will not leave Prince aside. No matter where we go, if we see Devin... Prince is in her little bit. Actually, our second guest today, you guys, uh, actually also worked with Ron Moss because he was on The Bold and the Beautiful for a bunch of, a bunch right. of episodes. So and it's Ron of, Moss all our six degrees of separation. Ron Moss has a whole bunch of new stuff going on, so we'll hear about it. He said The Barn. It's called The Barn. It's in Cologne. What is that, honey? The Barn. It's in Cologne. It's a, is that a town? It's a, it's a place in Cologne. Is it an old town that's spooky looking? Because I understand that this town that we're going to for the exteriors is ancient and it's very, very uh, macabre looking. And the meanwhile, we saw we saw Brute 1976. It'll come out, you know, next year. Oh my uh, god! It was a lot of fun. We got to see all our friends, and we had a really good time. And for those of you who are fans of the Hills Have Eyes and Texas Chainsaw Massacre, it's very much an homage to that. And they you know something. Job. Sometimes I say things and people think I'm mean. I'm not mean. I love Joe Nitta. He is one of the most honest, nicest writers and friend that I have. I trust Joe with my life, but he's nuts. He's <laughs> insane. He is demented. He needs to be institutionalized because this movie is... Ah! I loved it. <laughs> Jimmy loved it. I, I thought it was fantastic. I kept, I kept losing my breath and looking down at this movie. No, folks. Marcel Walsh, Sarah, French. No, this movie had a scene in it. No, folks. Yeah, sorry, we can't tell you. But we can't tell you the scene. But, folks, I said to Jimmy, let's get the guys with the white suits to get Joe. Joe needs help. B, he, B says it's a part of Cologne. It's like a a, a sub a little suburb in Cologne. Is it spooky? I don't know if it's spooky. Because they she's said she's googling it, so she doesn't know. They said that it's very very ancient 
and very spooky. Anyway, getting back to the movie, I <laughs> I enjoyed it, but and you know I don't like horror movies. I, can, I wish I could tell you, but I can't. No, you can't tell. But them Sarah anything. French is so beautiful, and looking at Sarah French for an hour and twenty minutes is a sheer delight. So I had a good time, and it was good seeing Marcel and the two fellas that Jimmy talked about from Germany were the nicest, most gentle. I've got to say, I've met quite a few people now from Germany through Marcel. The young people in Germany have such a respect for age. They didn't treat me like an old man, but they treated me with such kindness and caring, held my arm when we walked, asked me, would you like to sit? European men, uh, European people are so much nicer than we are here. We're very rough and, and very like, you know, in a subway. And they, they could, Wait, there could be a 90-year-old crippled woman in a, in a wheelchair, and they'll knock her over to get a seat in the subway. Not in Europe. They were very nice. They very, actually, very charming. They sent us a. They sent us. They were married. Two gay guys married. They sent us a, a nice to meet you text the next day, yeah. and then on Sunday when they were flying back to Germany, they said, you know, they hope to see us in Germany soon, and they were very, oh, we very will. nice. When we they invited so us to stay with us. them. I don't like staying with people. I'm not comfortable. So you know, we'll stay in a hotel. Besides, the production's paying for the hotel. So, uh, but we will see them socially. And they're lovers, and husbands, they're married for 16 years, and just the most delightful people. And then we met another guy from Switzerland with their other movie who was absolutely magnificent looking. And I said to him, are you, are you ever going to think of being a, an actor? He laughed. He said, oh, no. She says, we teach manners in Germany. What? The, she says, we meet... She said, B says, don't, don't talk you, away from B me. says she'll show you the best restaurant, and in Germany they teach manners. <laughs> manners. No, I, when I come there, you know, the first thing I'm going to order. She says we'll have a wonderful time. All right, so we're going to move on. Ready? All right, so real quick, you guys. So our first guest is going to be on. I'm going to hope that we don't get in trouble for playing this because I'm going to play a video before oh, he comes on. Again. This is the 31st, the 35th anniversary trailer to The Lost Boys because – because our first guest is, is one of the stars of The Lost Boys, which happens to be uh, in my top five favorite movies of my entire life. And uh, so I'm super excited that he's coming back on the show. So we're, real quick, we're going to play the trailer for it. Hopefully they don't flag us and put a little dink in a thing. But either way, we'll be right back. So And then we'll be back with Jameson Newell. So here it is, you guys, just so you know what we're talking about. The Lost Boys, 35th anniversary trailer. Enjoy. You never grow old, Michael. And you'll never die. Be one of us. Notice anything unusual about Santa Carla yet? It's a pretty cool place. If you're a Martian. Or a vampire. <laughs> Dad. You know where Hudson's Bluff is? I can't beat your bike. You just have to try and keep up. How far are you willing to go, Michael? Yes, first. How are those maggots? <laughs> Drink some of this, Michael. Don't. Michael, it's blood. Michael, 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 Michael. <laughs> Now you know what we are. <laughs> now you know what you are. Help me! Stay back! Stay back! Help me! My little brother, a vampire. You wait till mom finds out, buddy. this <laughs> Ooh, you smell like garlic Hey, so everybody, so that was the Lost Boys 35th anniversary trailer and I don't know how long ago that was, but now we're going to bring on 
uh, one of the stars of the film, Jameson Newlander. Let's bring him on. Hey, dude, how you doing? Hey, how's it going? Good to see you again. Good to After, see you, uh, too. Well, 13 years. Uh, June 15th, 2011. I looked it up today. Wow. Wow. Uh, That's so June cool. 15th, 2011. And like yesterday. Ron wasn't on the show back then. We're That's a lot when, bigger now. That's when the show had no ratings. No, it had ratings. Right. So actually, I looked it up today. We got 976,000 plays when you were on the show the last time. But right now, we're averaging 5 million. Um, Amazing. Uh, I'm, I'm going to let you know in like a, That's in ever like since I came weeks. on the show. In like three weeks, yeah, we'll yeah. let you know like how we did and if we're doing better. In the meantime, this is my cool, outrageous man about town co-host, Mr. Ron Russell. Say hi to James. Nice to meet you, Ron. With that introduction, actually. <laughs> I could vomit from that introduction. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ron Russell, what a... I'll remember that when you want to make you do it. Uh, how, how would you want to, you know, you, you well, do it? Give I'm, us married, a I'm married to the son of a gun. <laughs> and, you know, he, I know, Mr. but I, it was a buildup. It was a big buildup. Like, like, like an old man. No, not like an old man. Do you like to be introduced as Mr. Newlander? Sometimes it's cool. I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, I can feel a little <laughs> bit like, you know, <laughs> are you are you like Ron <laughs> Russell. You know what I mean? Something like that. <laughs> Jamie, are you married? I am, yes. Would you like your wife to introduce you as Mr. Newlander? No. Um, I, I guess you're right. Yeah, I mean, in certain ways. I lose either way, when I go to the doctor's office, I, or I call, I tell, I say that I'm his husband so I can answer the phone calls and questions and stuff, and then he doesn't like that either. So <laughs> it's kind of like a lose lose, no matter what you say. You're gonna lose. I am a very independent 83 year old man. Okay. Wow, 83. Three years old, I, I can't I'll believe be 84 in May. And, really and I'm a great, great believer in just because you're in your 80s does not mean you're demented, stupid, backward, or you can't do anything. Because yeah. I function exactly as I did when I was 20. So Yeah, totally. My, my mom is, is in her yeah. 80s. Unless, Unless, of course, you are unfo unfortunate to, like, what's his name, who died today? I feel so bad. Who died? Oh, I didn't hear. Who died. The, the big star. Oh, I don't know. I didn't see it. Yes. I wasn't on social media no, what, today. I can't, why can't I think of his name? Who died today, B? Look it up. The guy, the guy that we were hiring for the movie that wanted three million, who's got dementia. Oh, that's not. That's a fake news. That's a fake news? Yeah, that's fake news. No. He's, He's not just pretending to die so that he doesn't have to do the project. It's not, it's not Bruce Willis. Yeah, Bruce no, Willis No, he didn't died. die. That's a fake news thing. Was, I Googled it last night. It was all over news. my Facebook page. So anyway. So how did they get away with that? So, so you guys, Jameson was on. Um, first of all, I didn't know. So I knew you were Jewish, but I like looked you up last time. I just knew who you knew a lot about you just because, uh, because I know a lot of shit about the whole movie since it's one of my favorites, but I didn't know you were born in New York. I didn't know you went to NYU. I didn't know you were from, I knew you were from a Jewish family, but I didn't know you were from a Jewish family with Italian descent. What yeah, the well, it's it's married to me. I can't get over it. <laughs> First of all, I wasn't born in New York. Oh, you weren't born in New York? Oh, your Wikipedia says you were born in New York. I know. I noticed that. I think I think I noticed that maybe with your thing, and I – it was something else, and I, I, I haven't yet corrected it. But okay. no, I, was born, I was born in L.A., but I moved to New York, uh, and then I went to NYU. Okay. So where, where – oh, uh, I almost thought you were perfect. <laughs> well, you know what? I'll tell you. You know what's interesting okay. is that when I was a teenager, like when I was doing Lost Boys, when I was you know kind of in that zone, I was kind of trying to pretend to be a New Yorker. Really, I mean that sort of like vibe, that tough vibe that New Yorkers had. I was, I loved it. You know, that's why I ended up moving there. You know. Well, I don't know why Jimmy's so shocked about your situation. My father was Jewish. I'm Italian, so with, yeah, know. but that's you. <laughs> Yeah, but, exactly. I know, but, but you've been exposed to me. No, I know that. that so has that's nothing to the do thought with of it. being Italian and maybe Jewish. Oh, that, it's is not that. It's the fact that I didn't know he was. You must remember one thing: Jewish is not a nationality. Jewish is a religion. Oh, I know that. Sure, sure. and also, and like you know, as Jewish goes, I, I, I'm not that. I'm not really religious, and we're, we're not religious. Am I? Either, yeah, I mean, my kid had a bar mitzvah, but we sort of, you know, we it was like he didn't even go to Hebrew school for that long. We just kind of. Made it happen. My, my father and mother were socialists. In other words, yeah. communists. And yeah. communists back in the 40s didn't believe in religion. Church and synagogue, they, they thought religion, you know, like Russia, yeah. there's no such thing as religion in Russia. Godless communists, you know, that we kind so of use that to against Anything. She was Catholic, he was Jewish, and I just grew up with nothing. But yeah. in my later years, I chose to be Jewish. Over yeah. 
Why? Why was that? Why did you choose that? Just so uh, I don't practice. Why did you choose that? He said. Why? Because the 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 Jesus Christ stuff I don't go for. I don't believe, and I like the the first test, the first Bible better because Moses did communicate with uh, at a space uh, a spacecraft. There was a spacecraft yeah. hovering over Moses with the loudspeaker like giving him the show. Ten Commandments. <laughs> no, I. I, I used to let the end of that kind of stuff. No, he no, I really it. believe in that. That that, that yeah. the Jews can't. We are from another planet. I believe that I believe many that. many <laughs> years, millions of years ago, and that the religion of Judaism came from the extraterrestrials. So I believe that it's the closest thing to the Creator. Being, wow, being Jewish, the religion is is far more understandable than the second book. Yeah, totally. I I um I grew up basically Jewish, you know, lightly Jewish, but um, and it's sort of the one that I feel most comfortable with. I don't, I'm not, I don't, um, I have a hard time with like a, a a guy in the sky, you know, kind of thing, you know, like the guy in the sky is telling us what to do. It just doesn't seem. I feel like they meant it more metaphorically. But when you start getting into the possibility of spacecrafts, I read that book, Chariots of the Gods. Do you remember this book? Oh uh, yeah, the yeah. So. American. I did like a report on that in, in like seventh grade or something like that. And, um, and it was really fascinating to me. Like it, I really, I was full on believing it at the time. I haven't really thought about that much since then, but it's interesting stuff. Absolutely. Listen, we had to come from something. We know. That. Yeah, that's true. So why not? Now people say to me, Oh, you're crazy to believe in extraterrestrials. And I say, well, do you believe in Jesus? Oh yeah. Well, you believe in a man who could create miracles and do all those things, and his father is God. What about mother? Does God have a mother? Did he fuck some woman to get you? I mean, where did Jesus come from? An eggshell? I mean, it's, it's just so ridiculous. I can't believe it. And for all of you people out there who love Jesus, I respect you. So I'm not being, I don't want to upset or offend you. You know, to each his own. You're, so let's go. I'm no, up. I'm not finished, Four Eyes. Right. Um, you know, to each his own. Yeah, you too. <laughs> you too. Yeah, exactly. Actually, wait, I have a question though. So I'm gonna move on. So wait, how old were you when you asked? First of all, we're not gonna spend the whole time talking about the Lost Boys. I just gotta get it out of my system again. That's cool. That's cool. I love talking about the Lost Boys. Uh, but 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 how old were you when you did the Lost Boys? I was 16. Okay, oh, so you were so much younger. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I was 16. I was I, I auditioned for it when I was 15, and then kind of, uh, but then by the time we started shooting, I was 16. You look like 12 years old to me, anyway. <laughs> Didn't you look young? Yes. So you didn't look 16. So I like love it. Yeah. So I mean, 16 when I was. This 16, is my. I look like a man. I, I was a, a late bloomer. Yeah. So we've actually um, on the show. We've been me personally, and on the show, we've been super fortunate because we've. Um, uh, well, first of all, I, I met Corey like years ago with Brooke McCarter. Brooke McCarter and I were really, really good friends. Um, yeah. I initially met him at a at a convention in Florida, and and this uh, is not your interview. Hang on, I just wait a second. <laughs> it's not your uh, interview. Uh, you know, uh, this is my guy. Uh, I want to hear him talk. We're gonna you? have him talk. Relax. Uh, <laughs> So, so Brooke McCarter. We fight all the time. Brooke McCarter Jamie. was a really good friend of mine. Wait, can, do people call you Jamie? Uh, you can if you want. People these days call me Jameson, but there's still a handful of people that call me Jamie. You're welcome to. I like Jamie. Jamie's. So nice. wait a sec. Let me finish. So <laughs> so I became really good friends with Corey Haim through through Brooke. Yeah, uh, yeah, they were tight. Uh, I met Jamie Gertz. I met Billy Worth a bunch of times. We see him in L.A. all the time. Now, where do you yeah. live now? Do you live in L.A. now? Yeah, I'm in L.A. Oh, I didn't know that. I, for some reason, I thought you were like in Texas or someplace. I didn't know where you were, but okay. I didn't know you were in LA. You see we, why nobody likes wait, you. We see, you be quiet. Else. We see Billy all the time at all the premieres because like, we Who usually we get see? invited. Billy Worth, another guy from the Lost Boys. Right. He's in all Harley's movies. Right. I mean, uh, I should go to the premieres. I, I, you know, I got these kids and they're old enough now. I can I can leave and go to premieres, but there was a little while I couldn't. You know. you Boy Feldman's been on the show you also. You should go to those carpet things. We love them because yeah. we get a chance to uh, socialize with everybody that yeah, we, I love that stuff that we don't socialize with you know normally yeah. and it brings yeah. us together and it's very very it's fun so one thing Except that's changed me, and nobody's there for me for my generation they're all dead <laughs> well you represent you I have all the young friends all the young people so one thing that changed though since the last time you were on I think last time maybe you only had one child and now you have two or maybe you didn't have any and now you have two yeah, so what? It was 20, what was it, 2011? Yeah, June 15th, 2011. 
Yeah, so I my second kid was born in 2012. Was born oh, yeah. in November of 2012, so almost a whole year later. So you right? only had one of them. Yes, yeah, so a little over yeah. a year later. I like love yeah. it. So what are you uh, doing? You know, you know you they're doing? getting they're getting into acting. Actually, we just got oh, out for them. Why are you allowing that? <laughs> <laughs> what are you crazy? Well, listen, what are you doing? Are you working? Do you have a job? Are you sitting home playing with yourself? What? So I I for a long time I was I I sort of. I wasn't taking a break from acting. I just was trying to find something that actually paid, you know, money and stuff, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> right? so I, uh, I, I was in marketing for a while. I was, I became a marketing. I was a writer, an actor turned to writer, and then I was writing so many times, so much, and screenplays, you know, just they didn't get sold the way I was envisioning. They were going to all just fall, you know, fly off of the shelf. And then, so I was in marketing. I was a marketing writer for a long time. So. I still do that. I'm not at that job anymore. And so I'm doing that. And then I do, I'm, I'm acting more. I mean, you know, not since the strike and stuff, but I was just starting to act again. I booked a couple of gigs and things were kind of, you know, it's like over the last 10 years, I, I've like by hook or by crook got some new roles. And so I have kind of a current acting career going. Well, you yeah. weren't doing anything and making money, period. You were philandering like we all do. Yeah. Like, I mean, strike. Right, right, yeah. yeah. And that dumb strike fucked us up, but good. Yeah, it's like kind of what happened with me is that so it's like um, when I when I left my marketing job and I when I say left, I, I got laid off, you know, and it was during COVID and, you know, it was terrible time, crazy time. So and so but what I decided is that it was it was time to, to you know, do acting again because I was already making some money at conventions, you know, conventions were already heating up. I mean, not during COVID, but you know, it had over the last 10, 15 years. And I was like, you know, that is going on. Plus, you know, the conventions are getting bigger and, um, you know, so let's go for it. You know, so I'm, I'm sort of going for it. I'm in that space of going for it. But then the strike came, you know, I was like, I just had a little momentum and then the strikes and it's like, listen, so wait, how, we're how, all screwed up. Nobody's yeah. got it right yet. And well, it hasn't come back yet for yeah, us. No matter who we, acts and I produce. No matter, I, I, I just got my contract. Guess what? I'm going to work. August 14th. I mean, really? August 14th? I'll be 150. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's a long way off August 15th. Yeah, yeah I but know. But I have six movies to do, and they keep saying, oh, we're waiting. Our funding got screwed up or whatever. Yeah. It's all about the funding now. They had a lead. You know, always can, you know. No, but like we, oh, one movie I'm in, I can't wait to do it. It's a great script. And they said, oh, we, we, we have delayed it, delayed it, because our star is not available when, when oh, I thought, what the fuck is going on? Years ago, when I worked years ago, I got a phone call. Come to work. I went right. to work. I went home. That's because you was, worked for studio in the studio system. I know system. that, but it was <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, even when I was a kid, it was, it was that kind of work. There was, those, there was like a geysers of work at times, you know, going on. I never knew this Cosmariah shit, all this funky <laughs> stuff. I never knew it. I swear to God, I'm not lying to you. I'm also sort of, I'm sorry, I didn't, go ahead. No, no, even when I did television, you know, the manager calls you up and said, listen, are you available for blah, 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 and you think about you. Now, oh, you're on a veil or whatever, you know. I mean, forget about it. Actually, though, I look, because I actually, so I actually thought, so I thought we could plug something current for you. Yeah. You have a new movie called Waking Nightmare, and I actually have the trailer we're going to play for everybody. And awesome. one, reason, yeah. one reason it's kind of cool is Diane Franklin's been on the show. I've met David Naughton. He's never been on the show. And Jan Birch is a good friend of ours. We, we see him love, all the time. We so love him. Uh, I yeah. love that man and his wife. They're the most per perfect people in the she's world. She's like a genius, too. Like, people, like, she they knows how to do so shit. Is that right? I don't know his wife. I only know no, him from, like, You don't know Jan? You know, I know Jan from like conventions and stuff, and then like you know conventions, you, you spend the weekend together, and we got like super tight in like uh, did, maybe Liverpool one year. You know, <laughs> did you ever let Jan get into your head? I don't think I did. Is it is it is that a good thing or a bad don't, thing? <laughs> don't the man okay. is the man is extremely intelligent. Yeah, they're like really and very shrewd. And once uh -huh. he enters your head, you think, oh my god. His wife okay. though, is like one of the best. You know, like so, I, I we produce. I produce a lot of films. Yeah, we're fans she's, of theirs. We're she's, definitely fans. She is. Of she knows how to do everything. Like if I'm stuck and I have a problem, I can call her up, and she knows how to like do everything on a film set. Wow, cool. Those, those are cool people. people. I like. Jan is the most. Jan is the most honest actor I've ever known. 
I love Jan. And you know, I what's cool is that I'm in a movie with him now. You know, it's like I didn't, I, you know, because of Waking Nightmare. And I think it was it was sort of maybe a little bit because of me. I think Billy hooked up Jan in that role, Billy Worth, because the director, Brian Farmer, he came to me early on, you know, and he was putting the script together. Really talented dude, by the way. I mean, that project is just kind of the beginning, I think, for him. You know, um, he's, you know, him and all, you know, both of, you know, both of the directors, Stephen Craig as well. But I knew Brian Farmer and he, yeah, he, um, the fact that, you know, Jan and I are in a movie together. And now that I'm in a movie with Diane Franklin. You know, like that's amazing. Now I mean, we see her a lot too at at different events in LA. You gotta come go to the to. carpets. Come to the good ones, the big I'm ones. I'm down to that. I didn't even. I kind of didn't think about going to the premieres and things like that, but I should. I mean, you so know, it's I, like, wait a minute. If you get invited to the director's red carpet, the director's building, right. I'm not in the director's right. build. The food is out of this world. <laughs> I've been to Director's Guild screenings, actually. Oh, the, I, the, I little, the little the little hamburgers. You know what? I will. Uh, yeah. So we get like if I know like Jan and, and Billy and a bunch of people are going to be at a premiere, like I'll like I'll hit you up and ask because I'm a publicist, so I get invited to everything. Yeah, uh, totally. I, I'd love to. You know, and I'm an fun. actor, so there. I'm an actor, and I know everybody, so I get invited to everything also. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And I, you know, the thing is that it's like, uh, I like to party kind of, I mean, you know, like I, I didn't, the, the thing is actually, I, I would have probably done better in my early career if I knew how to party more as a teenager. I know we it's don't incredible. party. We, we network. We don't party. We network. It's uh, the same thing. Though, isn't it? It's the same thing I have yeah. to tell you a quick story. <laughs> yeah. Um, Paul Savino was going to be in my movie, right? Playing him out here. Was. And Paul was on our show. And Paul said he bought a beautiful farm in Pennsylvania and never got work. Nobody gave him work for years. He sold the farm in Pennsylvania, moved back to Hollywood. People saw him. He never stopped working. Moral of the story, out of sight, out of mind, you're out of the business. Right. Well, of, so sight. when we go to red carpets, they come up to me and they say, oh, Ron, you know what? I'm happy I just saw you because I need a mafia guy. In a movie, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, great. You will get work. You got to push your pussy, as they say. <laughs> yeah, I'm down for that. I've sort of been doing it like on uh, Insta Instagram and like, you know, on social and things like that. And I have my like YouTube show and stuff. And I've sort of been thinking in that, but I haven't really thought about going to the premieres. I mean, I haven't really been invited, but I'll, a lot, I can a push lot, the issue. I know, a lot you'll of, get invited uh, easy. Jamie, a lot of work you'll get because cool. people don't remember you. They don't remember me. They don't, unless right. you're a uh, Burt, not even Burt Reynolds is dead, God forbid. Oh, poor Bert. But unless you're a superstar. Actually, though, I think, though, that you will, because uh, there's a lot of nostalgia going around right now of having all the yeah. stars from the biggest That's movies true. in That's a true. movie. You know, and, and since yeah. you're in one of the biggest movies, like it could totally work. So tell us a little bit about then Waking Nightmare. Tell us a little bit about it, and then we'll like play the trailer for it. Okay, cool. So, you know, so um, um, I play a dad. It's my first dad role. <laughs> um, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, it was just great working with Diane and Shelly. Those, they're the ones I worked with most, you know, the, all the other people in it were awesome, but the ones I was really working with closely were, you know, my daughter, Shelly, you know, in the movie, my daughter and Diane, my wife. And it was, it was just really cool because the really talented people and the script, you know, like I said, um, you know, Brian Farmer, um, and Stephen Craig, like just, you know, young, really hungry, talented people and just trying to figure it out. You know how it is like you're, you're on a film and, 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 you know, there's, there's a little bit young, but you can see they have this vision and, and, uh, it, it just turned into a really cool movie. And I love how they finished it. They finished it with a bunch of cool graphics. I don't know if you've seen it, but you probably see it. You'll see it from the trailer, but the trailer, right? I'm not sure we're going to find out it, right now. Will it be in the yeah. trailer? Oh, yeah, I think it will. I think it will. They, they did some cool it, stuff. It, and it's, it's, it's fun playing fathers. I'm playing Kevin Bacon's father in a movie coming up. Nice, cool. The movie I'm talking about with the great script. And it'd be fun playing Kevin's father. The only problem is Kevin and I look the same age. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they have to age me. And, I said, and when the producer said, Ron, we have to age you, I, I said, oh, my God, that is so fabulous. <laughs> because I don't look 83. You it's know, true. You know, you look, you look really 65. Beautiful. And, and, and thank you. And that's what Kevin Bacon is. And so anyway, how are you going to play the father? I want to know. Well, I mean, you know, it's done now, but you know, I, 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 uh, I was gray. I went, you know, I went gray for it, yeah. you know, and then I quickly went on gray, you know, <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, I mean, what method are you going to be father knows best 
or are you going to be father that's mean Depends or father? No, about. I want to hear how he's going to play father. You know, it's a great, it's a great question. I, I think well, that played it already, it's already right? done. That's why you have a trailer. Okay, oh, oh goodbye, done. goodbye. We're going to watch a trailer. No, no, you no. Yeah, I yeah. I mean, you, you, you introduce the trailer. You introduce it. Juan, play the trailer, and we'll be right back. Introduce it though. In introduce it. Like, like yeah. what do you mean the movie? Okay, okay. So, uh, all right. This is uh, th this is called Waking Nightmare. It's a movie I did with uh, a bunch of great stars. Um, Diane Franklin, you know, people from my genre, uh, Diane Franklin, also Shelly Regner is, uh, you know, one of the uh, pitch perfect, uh, girls. So, um, it was, uh, really cool. And the movie is really trippy. There's some really nutty stuff that, um, that Diane Franklin did like really stuff that was really creeped me out a lot actually. And, um, and aside from that, one, one thing the directors did is they really um, also emphasized us as a family. We really got to kind of feel like a family a little bit, which I think was a big part of selling it. I think it's a really cool movie, and uh, check out, check it out. Let's go. Lately, the sleepwalking has been coming back. How have you been since you've been back? I'm fine. I don't know why everybody keeps checking up on me. Your mom's inside. I guess you got an appointment at the clinic. Great. Can't wait to be a certified comatose patient. Ever since the accident, I haven't really spoken to anybody. Something as traumatic as that can really take a toll on a person. But about the sleepwalk, anything out of the ordinary happening? The occasional nightmare. The nightmares will eventually stop. Where were you listening? The sleepwalking has gotten worse. You can't blame yourself for her committing suicide. But she, got, she was right here. You didn't see her? Jamie is gone, Jordan. The sooner you realize that, the better. You don't want to do this, honey. I promise you. So you guys have me lean on this guy? Neighbors said they saw a female mid-20s brunette around the neighborhood. This is Detective Morris taking the lead on this case. Did something happen? Do you happen to recall where Jordan was last night? And she was home, actually. She's been having nightmares. It's her college roommate committed suicide. It's taken a real toll on her. Do you remember any of it? I'd like to up the dose of Ambien for her, Doctor. Are you sure this is what you want? My mother knows best. I trust her. Ah! Whose blood is it, Jordan? I'm telling you, you hurt somebody! I protect my child by means. <laughs> what if I woke up the bad guy? Wake up. Yay! So you look good though. You you weren't really great. You were more like salt and pepper gray. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's what I. Mean. <laughs> they, they aged you well. You look older than you are now, for sure. Now, it's interesting, right? It one, was natural then. One but I, I, something. I, younger. I find it very upsetting these trailers that we put out with this quick. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Years ago, we shot a trailer, but we showed you a scene. And right. that made you understand the movie better and want to see it. These quickies confuse me because they're trying to put the whole cast in it in a second. And it right. just, right. so this trailer that. I'm not happy with. <laughs> I would have liked to have seen, no, I don't think it's a good trailer. So your sure. producer, I said so. I, I will. Just should have held the camera on you longer. They should have held the camera a little longer on the, on the, the principles. And the yeah. extra people, you know, get rid of them. But I mean, uh, it's it just doesn't work. For I'm me. used to it, so I I, and I, I don't was, like. It I totally understand. It doesn't the whole tell thing. me a story. I, yeah, I, I only know there's a carpet knife, mm -hmm. and you as, as a doctor <laughs> or something. No, that yeah, so I mean, I agree with you in a certain way with with those kinds of things. I was just talking to my kids about this. Um, you know, my kids are getting to the point where like they're like little adults, you know, like eleven and fifteen. So. You know, I can talk to them about like cool stuff. And, 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 and the thing is that most of the time when trailers do that kind of thing where they don't really show you much at much actual dialogue and stuff, oftentimes they're covering for the fact that there's no good, that there aren't really good scenes in it that, you know what I mean? That's what I, that's what we were thinking. Now with this, I think they just, you know, they, they were trying to kind of go with that style because there's a lot of really good scenes in this that they could cut a trailer that I think would be more to your liking. I'm going to talk to them about it. The cinematography no, only, was really no, good. Only and, because, uh, only because, we are in a in a world now of people that do not have patience for anything. It seems that when I work or go, they say, "Don't do that. Don't do this," because the audience won't get it. I said, "What do you mean, the audience? What do we got morons out there?" And yeah, the producers kinda. say, "Yes, we do. The majority of the audiences are morons, and they don't understand dialogue." 
Because a lots of times I'm in a movie and I play a tough guy from Brooklyn, all right? You cannot fuck with me because I'm from Brooklyn. The accent's real. The personality is real, okay? Don't give me a line that sucks. Like I say all the time, oh, gosh, gee, heck, I'm upset. People <laughs> in Brooklyn don't say that because if you do talk that way, they beat the shit out of you when they meet you or in the street. Right. So, well, That's how it was. You know what I mean? Yes. So this yeah. is what I'm saying is that the dialogue... Example, I was in a movie where I said um, the germs and the director came over and said, you can't do that. And I said, why? He said, nobody's going to know what a germ is. I said, a joint germ is a place in Brooklyn. Go over there. Go to the new germ where they serve good food. You know what I mean? Couldn't use the word germ. And I thought, that's ridiculous. Well, like in, in Sopranos, they you remember, uh, you know, Joey... Uh... Joey Pants or whatever his character, you know, he 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 had that. I, I, can I say it? I, can we swear on this show? I don't yeah, want to. Say whatever you yeah, want. You can say whatever you want. Hua, you know, he says hua, hua. You know, instead of whore, yeah. Whatever. You know, it's like it was a thing. It became like a set piece. You know, that his character was like she was a hua. I yeah. always say hua. We're actually now, working minute, with him soon Jim, in this movie. Jimmy says Jimmy had a, a beautiful right? actress on, and he introduced her, and he said, and she's a very very famous whore. No, I didn't. And horror. I said, Jimmy, you can't call her a whore. How do you say? You're in horror movies. How do you say horror? Oh, see how oh, we say horror. I see. I, I say horror. 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 He says it right. You say horror. Horror. You make. You say like a whore. <laughs> no, and I the don't. girl got a horror. Set. No, she said, oh, my God. She said, I don't play that. She got She's a, a horror set. actress. He's got <laughs> like that actress. stupid Florida accent, Southern. You know, whore. Ho. She's a hoa. Horror. Whatever the hell you horror. say. It's right. horror. It's like yeah, the I think, on the R. But I, I think movies people have changed like, a lot. And right now they're geared, you know, towards the younger people, especially the lower budget ones. Um, I yeah. think this one looks like it's shot really well. Diane Franklin's a, a great talent. Um, She's amazing, yeah. Um, yeah. We actually went to uh, a red carpet two, two Halloweens ago where she was, like, honored, and it was at Madame Tussauds, and it was yeah. an awesome, like, costume party. Oh, very very nice person. She's super, very super nice, nice. Very nice person. Um, but, you know, I say whore, and it's Brooklyn, but whore. whore. Right, but it's like, you know, if they had, you know, in the case of uh, this person who told you not to say, uh, what was it? Jerk. Uh, don't say yeah, jerk. Yeah. It could and have I, been a, it could become like a set piece, you know, it could have been. Uh, you know, let me give you the whole line because it's a ridiculous line. Sure. Oh, yeah, you mean the joint where the coffee cups smell like dirty ass? Yeah, see, and and you get it for the that context. Oh, like, no, that means joint. That means a joint. They took you it know. out. They changed it. They changed it. And here it is. When I you ask, change it to what? You want to hear how faggy it sounds? A guy from Brooklyn's going to say this. Oh, yes, that's the place where the coffee cups smell like dirty ass. It doesn't go. <laughs> it doesn't work, you stupid jerk. Oh, yeah, you know, that's I'm the place. Direct so have, an Italian from Brooklyn. That's what got do it. But you could probably sell that still. You probably sold that pretty pretty well. So. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't seen the film. It hasn't ever come out. Let's, give it a, let's hear it. Let's hear it. it no, <laughs> it was in Europe. It did well in Europe. I don't know if it's here yet. But I haven't seen it. So I don't know what they used. But we have an audience today. That um, so wait, I want to switch. Go, I go, 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 go. All right, so okay, so how come, how come you got deleted out of Lost Boys the Tribe? Were you cool. must have seen it have my perspective on this uh, honed because I've been talking about this a bit lately. So it's like I um I think that the. I think they were looking for a little shock thing to try to include us, me and Haim, you know, at the end of the movie, you know, and they were like, oh yeah, this will be cool. We'll, we'll plant this thing. And then, you know, Haim will be like, oh yeah, he's, you know, your brother's the head vampire. And, and I think on paper it sounded cool. And I think when they did it, it looks kind of dumb. I mean, I, I don't know if you, some people love it. They like, there's a, someone I was talking to who loves that deleted scene. That's their favorite part of the entire franchise. So I don't want to, you know, some people love it, but for me, I think it, it looked a little dumb. I think a little cheesy, you know, I was this I had long hair, just very different than my character. And so I'm kind of happy that they did that because it, it made us able to in Lost Boys three in the thirst, um, bring back my character more as it, it is. Me. Well, I like the third one. I didn't really like the second one that much. I mean, it was okay. What, what, um, what movie? I got lost. The Lost Boys has three oh. of them. There's one, two, and three. He I, got get, deleted I get lost in two. every now and then. He got deleted in the second one. He came back in the third one. I thought it was. Uh, I thought the third one was a lot better. 
Who um, did you play in the third one? The same character in all no, of them. The same yeah. character, older. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't see well, that. I don't age. I try not to age. So it's, uh, yeah, you try not to age. I, I, I have to see it. He plays Alan Frog. He's one of the. Frog I like the. Lo I like the original Lost the original Boys. Is one of my. I, I want to see the third one. I've never. You should see the third one. You know what? It's not like I, this is what I say because I'm at, at conventions. And I talk about this. It's like, it's not the same thing as the first one in, in any stretch. That first one is a magical thing that came together. This like, you know, you, you can't plan that in the same way. So the thirst. Is it's fun. It's a little follow up. You get to see the Frog Brothers again. The first, was shot, the first was shot in old Hollywood. Yeah, well, that's true. Knew how to make a great movie. Yeah, right? that's yeah. the difference. The photography, the script, the, the 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 effects weren't CGI. They were just wonderful. Yeah, it was all that, practical effects. Yeah, that vampire shit. I love vampire movies. Love, yeah. I play a vampire, by the way, in one of my yeah. movies. A gay oh. vampire, by the way. Even better. So, so basically, though, like, because everybody, like, do you, who's your who's your convention rep? Do you have a convention rep? Yeah, uh, Missy uh, Gordon. Do you know who that is? Uh, yeah. yeah, Scarlett Abbey. Um, oh, yeah, I, yeah. I'm not exclusive to her necessarily. So, if you got some conventions, you know, I mean, Missy, you know, I love you, but uh, I'm not. Uh, you know, I'm still. I think, <laughs> I think you know, people. So people come to me all the time saying, "Who do you know? You know that we could." You know, put in our uh, in our films and stuff, and so every, every time people come on the show, I add them to my list. I've got like yeah. two hundred names of people, you know, because plus I, I that way I can you know use people in my own movies because I've got nine films in development mm -hmm. right now. I have yeah. six movies. I have six movies waiting, and I can tell you that in my six movies, I don't know how many people have come on our show that are now in my movie, right? Yeah, my lots movie. of them. Awesome. It's not my movie. I hate that. It's the movie. <laughs> It's not well, I love it. I love the ownership though. I mean, no, I mean, I'm, I'm totally down for that. I'm in a, I'm in a zone where like, I'm looking for work. I'm like, I'm, a, I'm excited. I, when I, when I've sort of, as I've come back to acting, what I've come back with is my, um, being a dad has like deepened my emotions. <laughs> it's uh, like, I going back to that. Wait, when you yeah. act as a father, do you use how you are with your children? You know, what's funny is that, I did a little bit, but when I shot Waking Nightmare, it was the the boys were still pretty young, and uh, Jordan, my daughter, in it was a teenager, and so I it was a I didn't quite have that experience. I definitely brought the the compassion and the emotion to it, and I think that's part of what's nice about it is that we as a family were acting that way, we were functioning that way. We're you know Diane's a, a mom as well, you know. So because most actors, yeah, we met her daughter. She's acting too now. Her daughter's yeah, that's right. That's really right. well. Most actors that are playing a father for the first time that I've interviewed, I ask him that question. And yeah. how many of them go blank? <laughs> and say, oh, I don't know. I said, what do you mean you don't know? How do you, you don't know how to play a father? They said, no. I said, then you shouldn't play a father. Right. Because if you don't know how to play a father, you're going to come off as an actor who has no idea what a father is. So yeah, if well, I yeah. you go and see what a father is, you know what I mean? Research it. Have yeah. you ever seen a movie where the father doesn't work? Where the Absolutely. father looks like he's going to fuck the daughter? It's not yeah, a totally. Yeah. Thing. Like Halloween. You know what I mean? <laughs> Rob Zombie's Halloween was totally. like that. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Well, you better learn how to be a father before you play a father. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, it's, it's interesting, too, because so I mean, I have another one of the gigs I got before the strike uh, was a, a movie. I played a, I play a lawyer in like a kind of a, you know, kind of a feel good, you know, holiday movie kind of thing. <laughs> And and one of the things is that it you know it has a I wasn't the parent but I was, you know um, it, it's sort of about parenthood and, and it's an emotional story and and I really was able to bring a lot of emotion even not even like I was like crying but just sort of you could see it in the you know yeah. in the the reaction shots and stuff which yeah. I was really happy to see you know and and I think that that's movie that genuinely that? coming from me what's that which movie is that it's called Mr Manhattan got it. It's, Carlos Pina, Pina Vega. And Brett Rice has been on our show a bunch. We love Brett Rice. Now, let me tell oh, you. Oh, yeah? Cool. Yeah, he's great. Let me tell you another little story. I have a very wonderful friend whose name is Dave Bailey. Dave Bailey has written probably the best script I have read in a long, long time. Oh, yeah? Dave knows me and my two daughters. He's very close with us. Right, totally. So totally. when he wrote his script, he said, Ron, I want you to play the father. And I wrote it exactly for you as you are with your daughters. Awesome. So 
this man is smart because when I play that part with the two girls, it's going to look real because it's so easy for me. This is what I'm trying to bring out. Yeah, and well, and that's the, no, the what Dave's movie. Dave's script is Ingrata. Ingrata. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And it should be shot yeah, soon. I want to do some more bragging for Jameson real quick because he's very humble. So, you guys, another big movie that he was in when he was young. How old were you when you were in The Blob? That was before or the after? The Blob. Oh, my. That was after Lost Boys. Yeah, okay, that was. You guys, he was in the remake, the 1988 remake of The Blob with Kevin Dillon, Shawnee Smith, who's like huge, Donovan Leach Jr., Jeffrey DeMoon. Damon, Erica Alaniac. That's a great movie. I fucking like it love is, the movie. It is um, the ultimate camp. I love that. Yeah. I, I, I loved I loved the blob and I I um I'm happy that it's getting the cred because at the time it, it didn't quite soar the way I was we were all kind of thinking it what it might. You know? playing the blob. I'm the usher. It's not a huge part, but I you know I have you know a few lines. I'm the, the brother of the of the one of the blonde kids and you know. So much was, uh, I love all those. I love the killer tomatoes, and yeah. my favorite is. Oh, he likes killer clowns from outer space. He likes all killer those clowns movies. from outer space. I love it. Yeah. Then that another yeah. film you guys that he did in two thousand. I think this is like two thousand fifteen or something. Bone Tomahawk is that two thousand fifteen? Yeah, Bone Tomahawk's another another cool movie. I'm you know it, it's also I'm not one of the leads, but um I'm I'm in a scene with. Just a bunch of great actors, actors and actresses. Uh, you know, Sean Young plays my wife, which is pretty cool. And you know, um, the we met her. We, we met her at a, we met her at a premiere. Uh, John, John Jameson had a movie premiere. We met her at his premiere. Cool. And, yeah. Uh, and, and that guy, the the writer director uh, of that, um, Cra uh, S. Craig Zoller. We met in New York. We were see that's the kind of thing like you're talking about. You know, we, we were doing a we did a couple of plays together. Oh, we did a movie called Tornado States together, which never went anywhere, but we loved each other. You know, he's a great uh cinematographer, you know, he like brilliant cinematographer. And I used him when I I did a short film called Rooster, which is on my IMDb uh you know page. He um he was my DP. We shot it in 35 millimeter because he was just so brilliant at like mm. making it work, like you know. Anyway, he's anyway. So he he when he did this movie, his career has really taken off, and he wanted me, and that was his first big, you know, bust out movie. So which which is a lot. So let me also, just brag the people in Bone Tomahawk. Before you guys. go into that long thing, I bet you you're going to get work from being on our show. Exposure, exposure, exposure. Totally. Oh, <laughs> so you guys in Bone Tomahawk, Matthew Fox, Kurt Russell, Patrick Wilson, yeah. Richard Jenkins, Michael Pere, James Tolkien, who was on our show. Robert Allen Muke, Sid Hayes on our show, David Arquette, Sean Young. Yeah. Um, it's such a stellar cast, you know, of people um, yeah. and, and those things. I mean, nothing will ever beat The Lost Boys just because for me it's like one of the greatest like movies ever. But, oh, but yeah, I also, yeah. you know, they, they were kind of excited about working with me. Like, you know, the, all these stars and they were like, yeah, The Lost, they were excited about The Lost Boys. I Absolutely. Like, it's cool. Cool. I don't think it's a matter of beating it. I think the new one just should hold its own and be as good. There is no new one. Huh? There is no new one. You said there's a new no. Lost Boys. No, there's not. They're, they're not picking a vlog show. Aren't they doing Lost Boys again? What? Is oh, there? Is uh, no, we're, we're pitching a Frog Brothers <laughs> show. We're going to try to do a Frog Brothers TV show, and like you know, we're trying to build up some momentum. We're not there yet, but um, we're we're pitching it and trying to get. Is that Corey and Jameson's Real Frog Adventures, or what's no. that? So the Corey and Jameson's Real Frog Adventures. What is that? What was that? <laughs> oh, oh, that was because we we just were investigating a uh, a paranormal thing. So I think it was just, it was just like a little like a video of us doing that. Um, and it was like, oh, we're the, we're the Frog Brothers in real life. You know, the real oh, Frog God, Brothers. The real yeah. Frog Brothers. Yeah. And I'm also doing a, a, another a YouTube show right now. Um, I've been going up to Santa Cruz and checking out the old locations and um, you know, just talking about them. It's some pretty cool stuff. You know, we have three episodes up. And something I'm still just trying to trying to figure out how to push and where to push, but I've, it's all over my social. So check that out if you get and it. And what's it called? Jameson Newlander's Lost Locations: Searching for the Lost Boys. Oh, that's perfect. You guys, look it up, Google it on on uh, on on YouTube, you guys, and let's watch it for him. Uh, yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty fun. So, so then, how hard is it to get out of horror movies? Well, you know, I'm I'm not naturally a horror actor, actually, because I'm not I, I wasn't a horror kid. I it scared me too much. I didn't go to you know, I started going to horror movies after I was already in the genre. So I'm really more of like kind of at heart, kind of a more of a comedy sort of I'm more of a serious actor in a way. Like, you know, I, I was in New York. I was doing theater and stuff. So I I never really like 
um, really embraced being in horror, but I'm kind of maybe doing that more now because so I'm not, I, maybe I'm not trying to get out of horror so much as play up the horror side of my, you know, painting. Cause you have a lot Resident. of stuff that you did. That's not actually horror though. A lot of like everything yeah. you have, you know, you're not really, I don't really think, cause I don't, first of all, I don't even really think of the lost boys as a horror film. It's not that's really true. It's light horror. horror. Yeah. Like, it's yeah it's light horror. It's that's not really, definitely not a horror. It's film. not a horror film. So no, I horror. think really <clears throat> the blob is, but it's a campy horror film. So I don't think a uh, waking I, nightmare might be horror. Cause it's, nightmare is a horror, horror, it's a horror film. Film. And, and bone tomahawk definitely is. It's a horror Western. But I, I try to stay away from cheesy, crappy chop em movies. Yeah, if I yeah. Do a crappy script, I don't do it. I like thriller. If we're doing a thriller, thriller yeah. everything I'm doing, every movie we're in, I'm in, is a thriller horror. Yeah, see, that's and good that's stuff. What I, I like it. because it has yeah. a storyline. A chopper yeah. is just everybody gets chopped up. There's no storyline. Right. Right. Well, I still can't see Saw. Like, I can't see it. Huh? Now, see, that's my favorite. So I that? love, he said, I can't see Saw. And I love Shawnee, but I, I just can't, I just can't see it. It's too. I love Shawnee and uh, I've only met her once, but I love the Saw movies, but I don't go with him. I go with his daughter. Uh, yeah, okay. I don't like I unnecessary. Like, I can't wait for the next To one. me, it's poisonous to young people. Young yeah. people's <laughs> minds should not think that killing, shooting or stabbing is an event. And a lot of them do, unfortunately. And yeah. I think it's a very a mind disturbing thing when you see things like I can't say it, but the movie we just went to the carpet last week. Oh my God! You have to see this movie to very know. Very graphic. To talk, about. you have to see it to know. So wait a sec, though, because we went to. I've never in film seen anything like it. Do you know wow, the really? you know the Mahal and brothers? That, neither have you. Uh, do you know who the Mahal brothers are? They, they do like indie, like low budget, you know, but they're decent films. And uh, anyway, we went. Their last premiere was back in October. They do like two or three a year, and uh, and we got to meet like Costas Mandalore, you know, who's the star He's, of all those songs. He is so nice. And he was in the movie. What and he was, a like, nice really cool. Guy. And we also met Robert Lasardo. I don't know if you ever met him. Robert Lasardo. Um, he's in a movie with me. Uh, and, I'm in a movie. Scary, but he's very scary looking. You know, he's all tatted up everywhere, and he looks mean, and he always plays really mean, bad people that kills everybody. Nicest yeah. guy you'll ever want to meet. A sweetheart Italian. Totally. Italian. Totally. Italian. You, can't, Italian. you can't beat an Italian from Brooklyn. So I read on your Wikipedia <laughs> that you also did a movie with River Phoenix. Is that true? Yeah. In uh, When I was – this was one of the first movies I did. Um, so it's like, you know, I wasn't like a, a Feldman. I wasn't in the industry uh, – I mean, I compare myself to Feldman in that way because he was in the industry since he was like two so I got in about when I was about 12, I started getting serious about trying to do it. And then I got a commercial at 14 and then a couple other gigs. So this was among the sort of early set of gigs that I got. Um, and it, it was Tuesday Weld uh, played this mom. Um, we know her was, too. <laughs> yeah, she, she was, I mean, I was young. I didn't get to know her that well, but I, I was on set one day. What, what happened is that he and I were both up for the, the sun in this, you know, he river wasn't, he wasn't famous yet. And, you know, and I, I wasn't as, you know, as famous as I am now. And um, so, but Tuesday Weld's blonde. So, and I was like, you know, as darker than I am now. I mean, you know, my hair was like, you know, almost black really. And so, yeah. And it's like, um, so he got the part, but they liked me a lot. So they made me his friend, you know, there's, there's a scene out there um, of us. It's actually a really cool little scene of, um, me being just this bad kid i'm smoking you know and like i'm just his friend you know and it was one day it was a movie of the week called uh circle of violence a family drama uh abc movie of the week i think or one of the movie of the week cbs anyway but he um and i was on set one day and we played football you know me and me and river it was it was this weird thing because i never saw him again and i was kind of hoping that we would be like in a movie again you know and then, of course, you know, of course, tragedy. And, you know, he um, but he was such a such a great kid. He was such a nice kid. I think he was also happy to have another kid on the set, you know. So I, I loved him to death. Running on Empty is one of my favorite like movies. Oh, him amazing, and, yeah. Hunting, and it's a great movie. And uh, so I like really always like loved it. So so here's something I like to my ask. My daughter Deirdre is friends with the whole family. Walk, oh, walk yeah. in River Joaquin, and, great. And, and Rain and Rain. Uh -huh. and and Wok's dad, my uh, so Leslie uh, Deirdre has only the nicest things to say, and his mother, Deirdre loved his mother and his aunt, very nice people. 
the whole uh, Joaquin gang. That's great to hear. I mean, because I'll tell you, <laughs> River was a special dude. A special dude. Yeah. Oh, before I ask the question I want to ask, because we have about 10 minutes left. Uh, uh, I didn't know that they made a tale of two Corys actual. I know that there's the, Cor the two Corys like television reality show that I knew about, right. but I didn't know they actually made a movie about the two Corys. And you play a yeah, comedy. Is this the documentary? Is that? Oh no, 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 no. That's right. There was a. There's a. That's right. There's a movie. I was in it. I played the cop yeah. that uh, that pulls Feldman over uh, for for drugs. In Which the, is kind of funny though that they would have you do that since you were. I mean, it was smart casting to do that. It was fun. I mean, they wanted me to, uh, I wanted, you know, they wanted me in it and, you know, I was happy to get a part. And I think originally they were talking about me playing Bernie, uh, Bernie Haim. Um, but it was a, a little controversial and it's, um, you know, I knew Bernie and, uh, you know, I, I, it was, it, it worked better for me to be the cop. <laughs> you know? I actually like, so I still keep in touch with Judy. Uh, Good. I, I, I always love Judy. I'm not in touch. And we, I, we, after, I think the documentary with, you know, that I was in with Feldman, it got a little racy and it made it all kind of a little awkward. And so, but I, 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 I always loved Judy. What? Jamie, this is the Yenta part of the show. Uh -huh. Our friends is out there. They want to know, is your wife in the business? How did you meet your wife? Let's sure. hear about it. The Yenta yes. want to know. Okay, so my wife and I, she's an actress, um, not su not successful, you know, um, we, we were both doing theater and she's a really talented actress. Um, we met in New York, we were both sort of, you know, struggling um, and we we met and we we fell madly in love. I, I mean, we, um, that's why I get emotional. We, that's, uh, nice. that's very nice. Yeah, she, well, she, we really kind of fell in love right away, you know, it's like, um, and it's like we've been together for uh it's 25 years today actually that we met good for you Are you're, awesome. you're, you're married of course yeah we're married we, we got married in 2002 so we were married it. yeah and um you know we went through a lot of things she she's she, you know um she had a, a rough time a few years ago and um uh, and you know raising kids is not easy you know we raised two kids and tell me about um, it. i raised two alone yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, and and also we have a, a type one diet. My my kid is type one. My fifteen year old is, has type one diabetes, which is like it's great. He's amazing, and but it makes it makes it a little harder. Certainly, those early years, it makes it harder. Um, and but you know what? We we're together through it all, and it's. it's I love it. I think we might be in love. You know, That's terrific. <laughs> That's the Italian. You're such an Italian. You're a sloppy it's Jew true. Italian. <laughs> The, the, it's true. The, the Italian side, the passionate side. There's some. It, it, I have only a quarter, but it's like it's it, it's it's big. You know? No, I'm just like you. I get chocolate when I talk to this one. No, I yeah. think that's beautiful. I think you it's know, we're married. And 10 you know, 25 years. years in the entertainment industry is a like. A, I mean, actually, for anybody, 25 years is a long time to still be in love. We're we're married for 10, um, and together yeah. only 11. And when we're married, 25 years, I'll be 135. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which i like love it so here's something i like to ask we have a couple minutes left and i like to ask all the actors so so bucket list um if you could work with any actor uh, male and female actor living or dead who would you like to have worked with and if you could have ever been in any movie that's ever been made in history what movie would you have liked to have been in wow oh man okay, so <laughs> i'm gonna say this um I would say that so there, there were three big influential actors for me when I was a kid, uh, and that was Pacino, uh, De Niro, and Hoffman. And I would say um, of those three, probably De Niro is probably the one that I would want to work with most, even though it's close. It's very close, you know. Um, so, so I would say that, Robert De Niro. Okay. I ne I've never worked with him. So. Did, did you know that their careers – uh, uh, what's his name's career is in danger because of his politics. He very sure, sure, sure. unfortunately, yeah, I'm sorry. And, Trump, and all the Trumpies uh, don't like him, and they won't go to his movie. So you cannot do that in Hollywood. You got to keep yourself private in sure. that respect. He's a great actor, though. But I don't know who Hoffman is. Who's Hoffman? He died. Dustin Hoffman. Oh, Dustin Hoffman. He's not dead. Oh no, no, the other Hoffman I'm talking. No, about. Dustin. I, I couldn't. What, think I Hoffman. 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 I'm talking about. I don't know. I mean, you know, like. 
a Kramer versus Kramer was a was a really big movie at the, a certain time for me. You know. Hoffman, who played with De Niro, and he played a homosexual in the movie with De Niro. The, he was a drag queen living in the apartment with Robert and Robert De Niro. Oh, friend. What yeah. was that movie? It was yeah, a talking about William Hurt. You're not talking about William Hurt. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I'm talking about Hoffman, who played Capote. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, okay. Different Hoffman. Yeah, different Hoffman. Yeah, different Hoffman. Yeah, that's what we're trying to figure out. Okay, so go to the female. Who's the female you'd like to work with? Um, it, it has to be someone not just that I think is uh And it beautiful. could be dead. Yeah. Oh yeah, well beautiful works too, but um let's see. I um I think I think I mean I hate to go, I feel like this is maybe everybody says this kind of thing, but you know, Meryl Streep. I mean, uh, yeah, everybody says Meryl Streep. You know what? <laughs> there are so many actresses far better than she. I don't know why she's the one that everybody chooses. She's a good actress, but she's not. Uh, no, I know so many actresses that I like there. Charlize Theron, even though I'm not an actor, but I would like. like I, I agree. Charlize yeah. Theron. Yeah, um, but Charlize Theron is not Meryl Streep's league. Charlize Theron is a good actress and beautiful. I know, but I just like her. Meryl. <laughs> Here's one. Here's one. You know who who is it in the in the 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 one in uh, and it's not just because she's beautiful. She was amazing. Um, in uh, the one about um, the the sex therapist. You know the 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 one who did that book. You know um, that that show. Uh, darn it. All right. You know what? You go. You go. I, I, You're exactly uh, like me. You suffer from the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> What's the uh, uh, okay? Well, while you're thinking of it and looking it up too, like what movie would you have liked to been in? Um, let's see. Um, so, uh, like uh, maybe like Reservoir Dogs. Actually, oh, movie. what movie? Reservoir Dogs, fantastic movie. Yeah, because I love I love Tarantino. I just think Tarantino is so brilliant, and Reservoir Dogs. It's like a play, you know. I think that maybe that goes back to you know that thing you were saying about that. You know that for me, good dialogue, good meaty dialogue of you know yeah. character stuff. That's the great stuff, you know. So I think maybe something like character that. development. That's what I like in a movie, and um, they don't do that anymore. That's one thing I have to give a plug. If I had a choice of 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 working with an actress, it would be Michelle Dockery. Oh, he likes Michelle Dockery. Do you know who Michelle Dockery is? I don't know if I do, no. She's from, um, she England. plays Lady Mary in she, Downton but, Abbey. But I've seen her in a million things. She is an incredible, better than Meryl Streep. She was on a show mm. on TNT called just something behavior, disturbing behavior or something. A bit, uh, something behavior. Right. behavior. She played a prostitute, drug addict, Liar, murderer, whore, whore uh, like thief, kle kleptomaniac, and yeah, and it, which is way different Love than it. playing like the prim and proper like Lady and Mary her from Downton Abbey. She's her so performance good. Performance was oh, yeah. outstanding, it's fantastic. Everybody. We actually watched the whole series twice. Michelle Dockery, <laughs> I want to check that out. Um, it made me think of my my one, but it's not the one I was thinking of. Okay, Catherine Hahn. Do you know who she is? Oh yes, lover. Sure. I I am like my wife and I both. Like whatever she does, for some reason, it's it's just magnifying. Mesmerizing. Magnifying. Yeah, mes yeah, mesmerizing. That's, mesmer yeah. Oh, that's what she's very funny. That's what Doherty does. She mesmerizes you. Uh, I like yeah. that. And, and, and yeah. You don't know why. You know, I mean, you know, you know, you can you can point to something, but some people just have that quality and and I would I would put her in that. There's a lot I of people have, who do, but I, have, yes, a I lot. have a lot of young people, especially at red carpets, that come up to me and say, Do you think I'm gonna make it? And I said, what do you think I am, Houdini? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> but I do know. I do know. If I talk to them for four or five minutes, I know. Really? Interesting. I know. Because some of them have a light that just is I kind know. of, you know, why are some actors so famous and so wonderful? Betty Davis. I knew Betty. Betty Davis I in knew. person was not the person she was on screen. Uh -huh. If you knew Betty in person, she was an old lady, <laughs> an ordinary old lady who picked yeah. her nose and drank coffee and smoked and drank. But on the screen, she was glorious. Why? Right. The camera saw something. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And if you don't have that something, you're never going to be a star. You'll be a struggling actor, sure. but you'll never be a star. So that, you know, what's interesting, too, is that along those lines, like when I um, 
like being Alan Frog, you know, when I was Alan Frog, like I wasn't like that at all. Like he, Alan Frog was tougher and cooler than I ever was, you know? Uh, so along those lines, sometimes the camera sees, camera sees me as tough, I guess, you know, maybe, maybe not this camera, you know, it's the glasses, but you know, I, I can be tough. <laughs> I think it was such an iconic thing. So what was the movie? Cause uh, what was the movie that you would have wanted to been, been in? If you could have been in a movie. Reservoir Dogs. Oh, oh yes, yeah. right. I fucking forgot. I'm so retarded. All right, <laughs> you're not retarded. You're just sixty. So you're 60 I will. Uh, so you guys, listen. You can follow Jameson on Instagram. Uh, it's at Jameson Newlander. Um, if you guys are looking for a cool actor for any of your cool projects, check him out. He's a yeah. Lost Boys for me. Literally one of my favorite movies of all time. I've seen it. Like I know all the lines. I've seen it so many times. Remember, you cannot beat vintage. Oh, and you have to come because I have an actual. I have a Lost Boys DVD signed by almost everybody in the movie, but you haven't signed it. So next time I you, I invite yeah. you to the event, I'm going to find it and bring it. <laughs> I love it. Oh, and I, I forgot to plug that I'm going to be in New Jersey Horror Con uh, coming up here uh, next month in April, April 19th. Perfect, you guys. So New Jersey Horror Con. We want to thank you for coming on. I'll definitely be in touch. I'm going to put you on my list of people. Uh, awesome. I get a lot of people going, and I do have a, I have a bunch of stuff going on right now with it, and I think a lot of people would like to to see you in some of the, you know the films. I think so too. I think so too. I appreciate that. Um, so it's perfect. So we want to thank you for coming on the show. Have Absolutely. a good one. All the best to your Absolutely. wife and your family. I love the moment, and um, and, and, and we hope your sons, you know, knock it out of the park. Maybe we'll it. work together it. one day. You know? I would love it. Let's do it. I'm, I'm yeah. fun on the set. I'm I, I'm a lot of fun on the set. I I said, you are. Uh, they tell me I'm not allowed to do that anymore. <laughs> we got. I think you have to have fun on the set. I think it's no, part of the deal. Not allowed. I was no. being I was being wired, and the guy had a lot of trouble getting the wire up my leg. So <laughs> I wear underwear. So I dropped my pants, and he was oh, down I... on his knees wiring me. And I said, "Oh, by the way, while you're down there," and they <laughs> ran after me, and they said, <laughs> "We'll throw you off the set." You yeah, can't those play. are tricky. Yeah. I, those <laughs> It was a joke. It was a joke. There's a hundred people it's around. Different now. It's different now, you know. Yeah. Not it allowed. You can't, can't do those jokes. Out. You can't fool around with the female actresses either. That's what I, yeah, well, you know, that's uh, the way that's it is. I was working yeah. with, <laughs> An era gone by, I guess. I was working with a female actress who was very pretty, and she couldn't get a line right. And she kept saying, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I said, just. Show a tit, nobody will care. Ah. <laughs> you can't say that anymore. Can't say can't that anymore. That anymore. <laughs> can't do that anymore. <laughs> Jameson, thank you so much. Best, best of luck in everything you're doing, you. and we'll be in touch. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you for coming. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. Nice fella. Absolutely, you guys. So nice, that was Jameson nice Newlander. Fella. You guys can follow him. He's at Jameson nice. Newlander. Now we're going to bring on our next guest, um, who is Greg Malavi? I think is how we pronounce it. Malavi, Malavi. Hello, hello. Malavi, Malavi it is. It's Irish. Malavi it is. All right. Hello, it's nice to see you. So now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, the incredibly talented Greg Malavi. Hello and welcome to the show. Thank you, Jimmy. Hi, Ron. Hi. I was going to introduce Greg, you, but now you Greg, know who he is. And Aaron Gobra. Or Aaron Gobrales. <laughs> I did that with <laughs> Cloris Leachman. Yeah, I did that with Cloris. It was around St. Patrick's Day. And I said, uh, Cloris, uh, Aaron, go without a bra. I said, and you went, you went without a bra on, a, on that show. Uh, we're, he we're, did, she did. Dancing did. show. So we, we did a whole interview about her being braless. And she was built on, on a uh, TV show. So first off, Greg, we have a, people in the chat room. Say hi to everybody in the chat room. Hi, everybody in the chat room. Nice there to we see go. You. Are, you, are you really Irish? I like your accent. Of course, I'm Irish. Irish. I'm Irish. I like love <laughs> it. <laughs> but, you, but you lose the accent because I watched a bunch of clips of you on YouTube. No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not. I wasn't born in Ireland. No, I was born. I'm, <laughs> my people are Irish. My father is Irish. And my grand, my grandfather was from Ireland. I like love it. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so you guys, I met Greg actually on Facebook. We're Facebook friends. And I saw that he was yeah. in entertainment. And actually, uh, when I first invited you on the show, uh, I only knew that you were on Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. My parents loved that show. Uh, they always, like, watched it. And I watched a bunch of it as a kid. Um, and I had no idea until after you said you were going to come on the show that basically, like, you've been in every fucking thing ever made. Well, wait, let's go back to Mary Hartman. <laughs> we have to go back to Mary Hartman. Okay, let's go back I to must, Mary Hartman. I must tell you 
my favorite part of Mary Hartman, and I laughed for days and days, was when the nuns had the auto accident and all oh, the yeah. nuns were over there. <laughs> I'm still laughing. That was the funniest scene you ever put on film. Do you remember that? With I do remember nuns? that, yes, of course. But it I was hilarious. I love that show. I watched that show. Oh, I never missed an episode. A man so of great taste. <clears throat> hmm? You're a man of great taste. No, it was a funny movie. It was it ahead was of a it. It, was was it was ahead of its time, you know. And Louise, yes, it was. And Louise and I are still very good friends. I see her a lot. And uh, we actually did a film together, a short film. It was at the Newport Film Festival and did very well. So, uh, we'll 325 episodes, according to IMDb. I don't know how many yeah. years that is, but that's a that's lot of years. That's a lot of years. That's a lot of episodes, yeah. And everybody I knew watched it, everyone. Because we used to talk about it. Did you see that? Did you remember that? You know, yeah, it, was, know. it was just a wonderful show, uh, but beyond its time, about subject matters that were not spoken of in those days as we in are doing days. today. Right. The humor was very sarcastic and wonderful. Yep. Uh, the, the, what, wonderful show. What I wish. Show. Norm, Norman Lear. It was Norman Lear, one of Norman Lear's shows, you know. Yes. And, and you, were very, you were wonderful in it as well, as all of the girls were. You know, I met. The lead, what was her name? The one with the braids. Louise Lasser. Louise Lasser. Louis Allen's first wife. Uh, right. I met her. Oh, I didn't She's know. Still living in the same apartment that Woody and she got when they got married. Oh, I wow. Met, I met her in an airport. And mm -hmm. oh, she didn't know who I was. And I just walked up behind her and I said, Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. And she turned around and she went like this to my face. Oh, really? <laughs> and she smiled. It was very sweet. Yeah, she's great. Of course, I didn't pursue it because we were rushing around to get on our flight. Yeah. But uh, she, I, was, she was I, very I, sweet. I also noticed, so I did a bunch of research on you for coming on the show today, yeah. and, um, that you were married. So you you were in, I, I kept seeing Meredith McRae in all these different things, and then I realized Meredith McRae was your wife. She was my wife for 20 or something, yeah. And she was on My Three Sons and Petticoat Junction, which I watched Petticoat Junction as a I, kid I, all the I time. Know, I know her from uh, years ago, Meredith. Uh, Billy Joe. Wife. That was your wife? Meredith McRae, yes. I didn't know that. Yeah, Gordon, Gordon McRae was my father-in-law, yeah, for many she, years. She was a nice little actress. She was. So, I'm gonna, so for the listeners tuning in who might be a little younger who don't know what Mary Harmon Mary Harmon is, I made a little brag list of some of the things that we could, like, brag about for you, and then we'll start go back and talk about some stuff. So first of all, you guys, and, and I, I ran out of room, so I couldn't write it all down, but here's some of the TV shows that he has been on, first of all. Uh, for, so Greg has been on some of these TV, these TV shows. Life with Lucy, Dynasty, McLeod, MASH, Family. That was my favorite show as a kid. Different Strokes, Heart to Heart, The Rockford Files, Canon, Marcus Welby, MD, Ironside, Family Feud, Dinah, The Mike Douglas Show, Gomer Pyle, Merv Griffin Show, The Fugitive, Ben Casey, Gidget, The Rap Patrol, The Jackie Gleason Show, Mission Impossible, The FBI, The Big Valley, The Virginian, Daniel Boone, Petticoat Junction, It Takes a Thief, Mod Squad, Gunsmoke, Bonanza, Hawaii Five O, Adam 12, the Mary Tyler Moore show. And that's only like half of them. I ran out of space and I was just like, okay, I don't have any let's, more room. let's go direct. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not finished. Okay. And then you guys, here's, no here's some of the cool people and everybody will know these people, especially like Ron is going to know every one of them. Um, Dick Sarge. These are people he's also worked with you guys. Dick Sargent. This is just some of them. Rosalind Kind, Yvonne DiCarlo, Ann Archer, Brian Dennehy, um, Hector Elizondo, Loretta Swit, Lee Purcell, who was on our show not too long ago, Steve Lawrence, Lucille Ball, Natalie Wood, Robert Culp, Elliot Gould, Peter Fonda, Jackie Cooper, Stella Stevens, Charles oh, Durning, Karen yeah. Black, Burgess Meredith, Jacqueline Bissett, Richard Burton, Ann Margaret, Maude Adams, Ann Bancroft, George C. Scott, Bo Bridges, Diane Cannon, and there's a bunch more, um, but those are like names that are like household names of your generation. And I knew a lot of them. Uh, Rosalind Kine was on our show a couple of weeks ago. And, oh, yeah. and I want to get to the Big Valley. Did you work with her, Barbara, with Barbara uh, uh, Stanwyck? Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, I, I, I would, uh, uh, I've met so many celebrities from my era, but Barbara Stanwyck I had never met, and I regretted it when she passed away. I love Barbara Stanwyck, her work. I love who she is, her personality. Tell me she was nice in person. She was. She was very nice. Yeah, very nice. Oh, of course, I love Barbara Stanwyck. Oh my! What a yeah, what an honor to work with her for you. What an yeah. honor. 
I, oh, I, God, you worked with Barbara Stanwyck. How lucky are you? I, I was. It was great. I mean, she oh. was wonderful to me. I mean, very nice and had lunch. It was, she was great. We had a nice little chat. Oh, I, 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 understated. She was never up there with Betty Davis or Joan Crawford, or nor was Ida Lupino. These, I knew Ida Lupino's sister, yeah. Rita, Rita Lupino, and Rita told me lots of stories about Ida. And Ida never made it like Barbara Stanwyck. Barbara Stanwyck never got an Oscar. Ida Lupino never got an Oscar. It was only about basically Jane, uh, Joan Crawford, and Betty. Betty held, held the crown in that era, yeah. But yeah. the other actresses were just as good, if not better. Okay. Yeah. yeah, they were you one. Gotta, you gotta be, you gotta be good, and you gotta get lucky to get. Yes. Yeah. you just gotta be lucky, and people have to like you. And, but, and I'm a member of the Academy, and you know I vote, and some of the people I vote for who I think are very, very talented just don't don't win, or they don't even got, get nominated. I mean that happens too. So I mean talent is selecting Greg, for awards is is the crapshoot. Greg, what have you got to say about the stars of our era as compared to today? I think they were they were much more iconic in the sense that everybody knew who they were because we had. Uh, less options. Yes. You know, we have so many options today. Look at people. I mean, it's all watered down now. I mean, there's some wonderful actors out there, but I, most people don't even know who they are. That's right. You're right. So, because the studio did the PR. Yeah. And that yeah. was what it is. I tell everybody, if you don't have PR, nobody's going to hire you. You've got that right. Yep, that's true. you got to let them know you're out there and you're alive. Let's talk about some other old stars that you've worked with that maybe are not on Jimmy's list. Well, Natalie Wood was one. Natalie. Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice. By the way, it's, it's the 53rd anniversary of Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice, the movie that I did 53 years ago with Paul Mazursky directing. Oh, I know Paul. Paul Mazursky. Me too. Yeah, Paul is, Paul is terrific. He's a very good actor, too. And Paul Mazursky, I met through Judy Marlin. Do you know Judy Marlin, the producer? No, I don't. Yeah, I, I met him through Mike Frankovich. Well, Judy, and, Judy, and, and he were that uh, movie was a big deal, though, right? Bob, it was Bob a big deal in his day. Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice. Yeah, ooh, ooh, ooh. the movie Bob and Carol and Ted and oh, Alice. Yeah. He's in oh, yeah, oh, you're in it. Who'd you play? <laughs> I played the, the group leader at Esalen, and uh, my wife and I went up to Esalen to research. We had, we had worked with Paul Mazursky for a week, the actors, the not the stars, but the lesser actors about Esalen. And we did improvisations that he used. And some of the dialogue he used, he recorded everything. We rehearsed. I had never rehearsed a movie before. But he did rehearse this for a week. And uh, we gave him a lot of great ideas. We were all very good actors and that had improv work as part of our repertoire. And we did improvisations on, on his script. That um, movie was a sensation. It was. Everybody was shocked with two couples in the same bed which suggested it was a four-way or five or eight-way, whatever it was. My and wife and I went up, went up to Big Bear. We, we did it. We, my wife and I did research because the part of the um, part plot was they, they met at Big Sur. They went to Big Sur for a weekend, the cast, I mean, the, the, the storyline. So I went up there to know how a group, group leader would behave and how he would you know, deal with the group. The very first night we got there, Jennifer Jones was on our plane going up. Who, oh, Jennifer, jo jo Jennifer Jones? I love her. Jennifer Jones. She was, in, she was in the same group we were in. We went up in a little plane, and we wound up about 35 miles away from Big, Big Sur. We had to go by bus. And I, I still have a, a sketch she made. Uh, Astro, shut up. On a, on a uh, paper napkin that she left on the plane, and I grabbed it as I got off. Anyway... You're talking about Jennifer Jones. You're talking about Jennifer Jones. Another one I'm crazy about. When we what, got there, my wife was, and I, Mary McClure. Go on. What What was Jennifer Jones like? She was very, very nice. Very sweet. And very sweet. As a matter of fact, though, she was also beautiful. Very. When we got there. The first thing we had to do was get into a big tub with a bunch of other people, a hot tub. We got up there about eleven o'clock at night. We were. We were to be to go into a hot tub. We were all naked in a hot tub. This was doing research at Big Sur on Mer 
at Esselen, the, the place up there where a lot of very liberal people went on weekends and, and uh, big stars in the United States were there. Who's naked? Everybody in the hot tub. Yeah, but I don't have names. Give me the names of everybody in that hot tub. <laughs> no, I don't. I just have Jennifer Jones, myself, and my wife, Meredith McRae. So you were naked in a, in a hot tub with Jennifer Jones? Yes, I was. And she found her moon, she found key light. Before she took off, she came, she came after everybody else was in the tub, right? And she found moonlight and took off her robe and then slipped down into the tub. And I moved my body slightly so she'd come down on top of me because the song of Bernadette was about ready to light herself naked on top of me. And I <laughs> My wife punched me, though, to make sure I knew that. <laughs> I don't blame her. Wait, wait, for all my people out there, Jennifer Jones was very famous playing the uh, little girl in... Uh, Song of Bernadette. Wait, well, she's a religious thing, a nun or whatever the hell she Song, of, Song of Bernadette. Song of Bernadette. But my favorite film with Jennifer Jones was with William Holden. Fabulous movie. Uh, shot in China. And oh, she, something she, about Su Wong? No, she oh. played. That's the other one. She played an Eurasian doctor. Oh yes. Uh, about that, uh, the, the love is a many splendid thing. A love film I suggest you rent or get. Great movie. A I've one, the, the, the ultimate love story. You will cry your eyes out. Jennifer Jones was one of the the, the most famous actresses of my era, and I never met her, and I always wanted to. So you just you and all the people I love. You're so I lucky. Know, I know. I know. Great, so lucky. You met my idols. Who I else? Did. Talk, talk more. Who else have you got? Name drop. I love it. <laughs> Actually, I can tell you though. Hold on. So but old stars, not the new things. Um, well, he uh, he. Oh well, I don't know. Like so, then I don't know. He. I mean, he, he worked with Francis Fisher and John Saxon. You know John Saxon. Yeah, I know um, Francis Fisher. He was in the Hindenburg, you guys, which was a huge movie. Good movie. Um, and everybody in it is is, is great. Is, is Anne Bancroft. School. You worked with Anne Bancroft? I never worked with Anne Bancroft. I've only I would her. love to have met Anne Bancroft. I never did. I just she met her. I met her. At, uh, I, I studied with Bobby Lewis. I don't know if you know Robert Robert Lewis. He was one of the group, member were, of the group theater. And Anne Bancroft is a good friend of his. And every Sunday, he used to have a little soiree uh, with Lee Strasberg, too, was there. And um, that's where I met Anne Bancroft. Did you ever meet Jane Russell? No, I never did. No, no, no. Never met her. You she guys too, for for all you guys who like soap operas, he was on the bold. We have we're friends with everybody from the bold and the beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think it's, we're still friends. Yes. Currently. I think you uh uh I don't know if you if you were on it when any of the people that we know were on it, but like we're friends with Ron Moss. He was probably on it when you were on it. And um Sean Kane and Bobby fella. Eakes. Lorenzo Lamas, Barbara Crampton, Kimberly Brown, Jacob Young, Ian Buchanan, Antonio Sabato Jr. They've all been on the show. Yeah. <laughs> so we've had we've had all of them. And um Did you ever meet Betty Davis or Crawford? No, I never did. No. Sorry, but no, I never well, did. I, I just, I, I I just, I've just played with Charles Bush, who does you know uh, who Charles Bush I, is? Of he course knows Charles I, Bush. I know Charlie for years, the drag queen. Of, of the, he always plays 1940 drag queens in his place. Yeah, Charles Bush, I know. Ooh, do I, I know Charlie. You're in New York, right? You're in New York. I'm in New York right now, yeah. yeah. Yes. I, I know Charles Bush how many years? 50, 60, how many? No. For, oh, Jesus only knows. Not that many, no. He's not I that remember many. Charles Bush when he started off as a drag queen. And he was... He, so Ron used to impersonate Jane Russell. Yeah. Um, Believe it Back in the day, uh, and sing in his own voice and do supper clubs and stuff, and then he became best friends with Jane Russell for years. Um, for years, wow. yes. for years and and, she uh, was quite a dame, a wonderful person, a great heart, terrific down to earth gal. I miss Jane all the time. Did you ever meet Loretta Young? I never met Loretta Young. No, no. She was a lovely, but a little bit before my time. Lovely actress of our day. Yeah. How about the men guy? Ever meet Robert Redford? I never have, no. No. All right, how, give me the names. Name drop. Let's just talk about what he's no, actually not, done. Not there. I want to hear, hear. I'm going to hear me say it, not you. I know, but like. It's he's, not your interview. It's his interview. <laughs> I mean, Greg. I know, but you're asking. No, Greg is good. Greg is going to give me all the dirt. 
<laughs> uh, what is what was your favorite thing that you got to do? Like, or what are you most known for? when you would walk around on the street? Does everybody know you from Mary Harmon? Mary Harmon, or of where did they, they know do. you? Back in the day, yeah. When I, I was doing a Broadway play uh, with uh, Tony Tony Perkins, and, and I was playing Mia Farrow's husband, we played a romantic comedy. That um, the guy who, anyway, I was doing this. I was doing this play right after Mary Hartman in 79 I was doing this play and I would get recognized all the time for that hey Tom hey Tom I even got propositioned by some some girls that way so they, wanted, <laughs> they wanted to make sure that my in, in the, one of the storylines was that I was impotent because we were having sexual problems my wife and I Mary Mary and myself I played Tom her husband on that show Tom Hartman I played and uh, people offered to help me with my <laughs> I didn't pick anybody up on it, but none of my wife would have killed me. But nonetheless, it was real. It was real, yeah, for sure. And they, one time, I was in the subway, and I was, going, I was going to do the play, and all of a sudden, these three black guys ran at me, and I thought, "I'm dead. I'm going to get killed." And what did they say? Three black guys ran at him in the subway, and he thought he was going to get killed. Oh, sure. And, and said, you're a star, right? You're somebody, right? 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 And because they had seen me on Mary Hartman. And they, they wanted my autograph. And so at that time, I realized, oh, my God, I'm kind of famous now. At that time, that was in the heyday of its of its of Mary Hartman. People watched it at night here in New York. And, and he, uh, he did a play with Tony Anthony Perkins. Anthony Perkins and Mia Farrow. I and played, Mia, oh, he played Mia Farrow's... I played Mia, Fa Mia, Mia Farrow's husband. I was a journalist. And I got a great review, too, which they were not happy with. I got a I got great notices. Uh, and they didn't. Mia Farrow. Oh, you know, Frank Sinatra's ex-wife. You, you're not naming her right. Mia Farrow is her name. Mia Farrow, yeah. I think I'm having a stroke. <laughs> Mia Farrow was in, in Rosemary's Baby. Yeah. That's correct, yeah. Right, Mia. So he played, Mia, her, he played her husband on a Broadway I, play with her. And she was a Perkins. nice, she's a nice little actress. She is. I love her. I love her. I thought she was brilliant in The Great Gatsby. She was terrific. Yeah, she's very Her good. performance in Great Gatsby should have gotten an Oscar. Her performance was absolutely perfect. She's, she's terrific great, in it. She's very good. Actress. And the nicest person in the world. Probably. Her mother was also. Her mother was very kind and sweet. Yeah. Very sweet. You're right. You're right. You're right. Mm -hmm. He also worked with Richard Burton. That's somebody I never met Richard Burton. Oh, you never met Richard Burton? But I met I knew Liz, Elizabeth Taylor, but I never met Richard. She, when I knew Elizabeth Taylor, she wasn't with Burton. She was with that construction worker, whatever his name was. Oh I, I did a I did a movie with, with Richard called Raid on Rommel, where I played five different parts. Oh wow. What movie? Raid on Rommel. Raid on Rommel. Oh, I know that film. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Raid on Rommel. We shot it in, in Baja, California. Down in, down in Baja. Yeah. And he played an Arab, didn't he? What was no, he? He played, no, he played an Englishman. He was an Indian, right? Tank commander. What? An Englishman. Burton? I, Burton, I thought, was like, uh, like a Maharaja or something. No, 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 no. no. Wrong movie. Oh, Reigns of Rancher. Raid on, Raid on Rommel. I'm thinking of Reigns of Rancher Boy. No, this. With uh, Lana Turner, where he played the, uh, the Maharani. So let me Maharaj. ask you a question. Did you like doing television? Because you've got you got a bunch of both. You did a bunch of movies and you have a, a lot of television. I mean, on the biggest shows ever. Yeah. Did you um did you like doing TV better than doing movies? And back then was it as different as it is now? Because now TV and movies are very different. No. Movies are better than TV. Movies are much better. <laughs> My opinion. TV stinks. Well, it's all the same kind of work. Yes, it's what it is. It's my Greg, question. Let me no, finish. Yeah, it's but my I want question. to say something. Greg, television is 100 miles an hour, and you only get it once. You're right. A movie you can work with and develop. I like movie. I hated television. When I did television, I thought I went to a factory. Mm -mm. Well, you are much, you're, you're hurried much more. There's no question about no, it. But if you have a good director, they'll, they'll find stuff and, and, uh, Look at Frank Sinatra only did one take. He didn't want to do any more. And uh, Dean Martin never did anything but do it. He never rehearsed. Do it. And so in television, you do rehearse. Um, it's, it's rushed, though. It really is rushed. 
No it's question. Right. Television. So it's still no or, different then because it's rushed now. Like on the soap operas, they'd shoot like 50 pages a day. Oh, you know, movies stuff today. Like that. Movies. I'm talking about today compared to back then. No, back, the question. back then they made a movie. Today they make a documentary. <laughs> it's not a movie anymore. We don't have dialogue. We don't have acting. We have realism. Don't act, they'd say. What do you mean don't act? What are you paying me for? How do you feel? If, I don't like the business today. Well, great performances that, that are that are real and, and get you, no matter what they are, uh, grab you. And I don't care what, what era it was from. I'm looking for work like that all the time. And some people just were able to do that or command your 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 attention just by grabbing you, by just looking at them. Like Greta Garbo could do that. Yeah. You didn't have to do anything. They just have something. And I think you talked about your, your previous uh, guest yeah. about this aura people have that you the call light. It, the oh, yeah. light. Call it what you will. Uh, they have that. And you can watch them no matter what. No, like I said on the other show, Betty Davis, I knew Betty. Betty off camera was an old lady from Connecticut. She was just as common and as ordinary as could be. She didn't do, let's ask for the moon, we got the stars, that kind of shit. That was on film. Betty on film was magnetic, was marvelous. You couldn't take your eyes off of her. Betty in person was an old lady that smoked too much, drank too much, and cursed too much. Right, so, but she wasn't always an you know, old lady. Uh, there you know, were times when she, she, she had magic. She had magic. Camera loved her. True enough. I I agree. I agree with that. Yeah. You can't get any one more thing, magnetic than Betty think, Davis. One thing I think it's super cool, like like because you've done so many different things, um, is the fact that like you out, actually out, so. Oh, I don't know. Is that yeah. us? Oh, can you hear me? Okay. One of the things I think is really cool is the fact that you were like on iCarly, which is one of the most popular, you know, kids kids shows I know, of I know, the I last know. 20 years. And you're on with the people who – all the kids that were on that show are huge stars now, um, and, and they were very popular then. So how was that playing the grandfather with all those young Hollywood stars? It was great fun. You know, Dan Schneider – I didn't even want to do the thing because I thought, oh, I don't want to do a kid's show. <laughs> and Dan Schneider's wife is the one who was a Mary Hartman fan. So she convinced me, as did Dan, that I would be um, uh, be known by a, another generation. And you know what? That's true because I did a play not too long ago in Seattle at Seattle Rep. And the kids, well, in the mornings, they always have on one time, one time during a run, regional theaters were due will have kids come and they came from a high school uh and they all knew who i was because i carly generation people and other people in the cast were older like me but who the hell is this why are they clapping for you when you made an entrance because they knew me from i carly so that was a great choice that i made that, to do it because they offered me the role and i said okay do i get paid I, yeah okay so i <laughs> do I get paid? Well, how do you feel? I, 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 here's how I feel about. I'm 83 years old. I'll be 84 in May. Yeah. And when they need, as they say, an old bag, so they get the eight thousand dollars from using me because they, they get, they get money if they use me because of my age. Yeah. Get, get Ron Russell, and I feel sometimes just like. Um, I don't know what I feel like. I don't feel very good about it. How do you feel about being referred to as, oh, Greg, is he still alive? Or how old is oh, he? True, 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 true. I get that. I get that. But well, I do, do theater, so. Well, do you think he'll drop dead in the middle of the movie? <laughs> I get all that kind of crap. Ron, are you healthy enough to, to do a whole full movie? I say, well, I hope so. And I hope to do another one after it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm that way too. I find it very disconcerting. My age coming before my personality or my talent. What do you feel about that, Greg? Well, I think so. It's, it, it's rampant in our business. Are you kidding me? Ed Asner and I used to rail about that all the time. I mean, he was rant about ages in, in our business, which is awful. But, uh, you know, as you get older, there are less and less roles. And uh, that's why I do theater, because theater is much more uh, forgiving. And... Uh, it's so much harder than I, I just I just got done doing King Lear. That's why I have the beard. But I'm lucky. Oh, wow, that's awesome. I'm very lucky. Unlike you, who had plenty of work in your youth, I had nothing. 
I work my ass off now as an old man. So I'm happy about it. No, I, that's good. I, that's I great. All the time because there aren't too many people my age that can still walk and not pee themselves while they're walking. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody notices it depends. Is that right? Yes, right. nobody notices. <laughs> Actually, I have a question. Since you're in New York, do you know Julian Schlossberg? No, I don't. No, sorry. I thought you might know. He, he did a lot of. Play, he does a lot of plays. Broadway. Stuff, Broadway. He's the king stuff. of Broadway plays. He does a he, bunch he, of stuff. He's an incredible uh, guy. Actually, you should meet him. He's a he's a very cool guy. Um, do, do you do? Well, look, do you still do stage? Can no, you? I just, got, I just got done doing King Lear, playing Lear. And do you have a plug, or do you remember lines? You wear an earplug? Or oh, no, 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 no. Do you remember lines? Shut up. I, have to be. I just big the uh, one of the hugest roles, biggest roles ever to put, to do in, on stage, playing King Lear. Yeah, oh, my God. And you remember that? I remember. I just did it. <laughs> I just got I, done doing it. I would be fired, <laughs> fired in two minutes. King oh, Lear, you're still doing King it? King Lear. I played Lear. You remember that? There's, yes, there's I did. There yes. That was ever. Yeah, soliloquies is this, this big. Oh my god, <laughs> it's a huge role! But I just got done doing it uh, a month ago. Well, I, I admit and you kept the beard. The 18th of February uh, was we were done. I, I That's never, awesome. I, I, I never lie. I don't like lying or bullshitting people. I use a plug, an ear plug. You do? Yeah, because I'm better than everybody on the set. <laughs> All right. Before well, the earplug, you could use it if you I've never used one. Out, what happened before the earplug was I used to forget who to talk to. My mind would go blank. So I got an earplug, and now they feed me that line if they see I'm starting to go blank, and it's wonderful. So I never drop a line. I I know every line I can act. I my work I could get done in a minute. Now they're the young people, they're flubbering. We're doing retakes for the young people. <laughs> and I feel so superior. Yeah, plug it in here. Because, you know, Johnny do, Depp. Do you was, own the plug? Or do, do, pardon? Do you own the plug? Is it yours or do you just ask for one? What? He wants to know if you own the plug. Oh, I own my own plug, yeah. I, I, I'll i definitely. <laughs> because, are you, you know. Are you, are you plugged in now? No. No, I have hearing aids doing? also. So okay. you get. No, I don't need the plug now because we're not rehearsed. We're not scripted. Right, right, I understand. But it's so much more comfortable. Like, I'm sure you struggled through Kings Lee. You're not going to tell me that you didn't. I struggled. I struggled the first. You see? Yeah, we hadn't so, rehearsed enough. So when you nice the first couple performances here and there, I, I called for a line. But after that, no. No. That's I, amazing, I, though, that you can remember. Feel, At any age, I think it's amazing that you can remember King it. Lear. Meryl Streep uses one. So does Johnny Depp, because Johnny Depp does not like to re read, uh, re memorize scripts. So when you see Johnny Depp in a movie, he's being fed. The same thing with uh, wow. what's it, what De Niro uses a plug. The other, uh, so many older actors now do it because it saves money. You know, yeah. production doesn't want over and over and over again because we run a day or two or three late, it costs money. So they're happy that you wear a plug. It's not a bad thing. If you say to them, don't worry, I can shoot a whole day. I have a plug. So hang on. Okay. So I want to, because we've got seven minutes and I want to oh, ask. Oh, he's so, a good okay. guest. No, I, I really am. I, I'm amazed. I mean, you really have uh, had such an astonishing career. Yes, um, you This did. is something that I like to ask everybody. And, and for you, it's going to be. It's not over. For you, it's going to be. Yes, you're still having an amazing career. His career is um, not over. I, being that you've worked with so many famous, amazing, well-known people. Um, if you could work with uh, like a bucket list, and for you this is going to be different than everybody else because nobody's worked with as many people as you have, male and female actor that you've never had an opportunity to work with that you would like to work with, and they could be living or dead. And then uh, if you could be in, if you could have ever been in any movie ever made in history, what movie would you have liked to have been in? And you got to pick something that you weren't in. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! All Quiet on the Western Front would be my. A movie that I would love to do. Awesome. Nobody's ever picked that. What movie? All Quiet on the Western Front. Oh, okay. What it says so much about war and its awful aftermath. Oh, I know. Well, it's a great what, movie. What part would you have liked to have played? Well, in the last one, I would have liked to play one of those guys that that uh, went through it. 
Um, and it was perfect. Sometimes they're not, they're not known actors, so I can't name their names offhand. Right, right. I would love to work with Gregory Peck. I would love to work with Gregory Peck on on Moby Dick. Oh, I did, a, I did a, you know, uh, Ray Bradbury. I did a play that Ray Bradbury wrote, and uh, and he he wrote the script for for that for Moby Dick. Ray Bradbury did. He was asked by John Ford to go ahead and, and come over to Ireland, and he wrote this play about being in a pub in Ireland, all men, in the play called Falling Upward, and I did it in L.A. a few a number of years ago, but. Um, that's one I would like to have been in. Playing Ahab would have been nice. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Um, and so who are an actor, act, male and female actor, that you think would be fun to work with? I'd love to work with, with Chino. Okay. Or, or De Niro or anybody of, of that ilk would be fun to work well, with. Because awesome. I'm trained by, the, trained by the same people. I studied with Strasbourg and, and opponents of Strasbourg. In fact, with Meisner, I studied with descent you know disciples of and um what about a female joanne woodward ah love to with joanne woodward yeah. joanne woodward yeah oh no yeah so sad about joanne i know i know it's too bad she's you know, got alzheimer's bad. and she's such a doll yeah. i met her oh my god before she was joanne woodward before she was anybody in greenwich village we all used to hang out marlon brando Wally Cox, Joanne Woodward, that whole genre of actors. Mm -hmm. And I don't think Marlon was anything yet. He was starting, but she wasn't even with Paul Newman. She hadn't met him yet. And she was a sweet girl. Um, this I is know. 1950, ooh, ooh, four, five, long time yeah. ago. Yeah. Have you lived in New York most of your life then, as far as an actor? No, most of my life as an actor, I lived in, in L.A. Uh, my daughter still lives there. Um, but I've, I lived in New York. I'm from upstate New York. My father was a baseball player. Okay. The White Sox, he was a coach for the Dodgers for many, oh, for many, many, many years. First base coach for the Dodgers, infield coach. Cool. In the, Walt, in the Walter Austin years. First base on the Dodgers? First Brooklyn, base coach. When he was the Brooklyn Dodgers? He was with the Brooklyn Dodgers. He went. He was in managing Montreal for the for the Dodgers in Montreal in '55 and '56. He came up to to Brooklyn to the big club. Walter Alston was the manager in '55 when they won the pennant. The Dodgers did, and then my dad was there from the from Brooklyn for Brooklyn '56, '57, '58. They moved to L.A. and so did I. I'm from Brooklyn. I was born yeah. in. So I was always a Brooklyn Dodger fan. And they moved to L.A. and I said, screw you. Yeah, of course, of course. But You're, then, not, from I, I Brooklyn, not, was... you're not from Brooklyn anymore. How could you be the L.A. Dodgers? Not possible. The Brooklyn bums. I know, they were, they were, they were. But anyway, that's what my dad did. And so I wound up in, in L.A. And, and started my career there, more or less. Uh, I had LA was nice I did plays in New York. But what? Remember how nice L.A. was back in those days? It was. It was smoggy. It was very smoggy in those days. I love it, but I didn't care. It was just sweet. Uh, yeah, it, was yeah. country. it was a little town. Los Angeles, you know, was. I li we lived yeah. on yeah. Poinsettia. And I remember the trolley car going up and down Santa Monica Boulevard. Santa Monica Boulevard, yeah. Uh, that's how long ago. In 1950. 1950 LA was just the most beautiful place in the world. Oh my God, coming from Brooklyn, you know, bricks and cement to palm trees and flowers and mountains. It was astonishing. I was nine years old and- um, I like love you know, it, so. You're, not, you're, about, you're about 10 and a half now, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, some, some people say to me, oh, don't wish to go back in time, it was bad. And I say, that's not true. It's not true at all. There were bad things, but there's bad things nowadays. But when I was little and gr growing up and becoming a young man, it was I used to have a convertible and I left sunglasses in the convertible. They were there. They know if it was stolen. Now, if I parked in Hollywood with my top down and sunglasses, they take the frigging car yeah. <laughs> and sunglasses. They so, would changed world it's a whole changed world so hold on because we're and, out of time we're out of oh, time. one we more thing go. and i remember when i was a kid 
the movie stars that lived in our neighborhoods, all over, in the Hollywood flat, the Beverly Hills flats, it was astonishing. You could walk down Hollywood Boulevard and you could have uh, Clark Abel and Carol Lombard or somebody walking. It was just breathtakingly fascinating and fun. We gotta go. Do you remember that? I don't remember that, meeting Carol Lombard and- uh, No, I think Carol was better. I think she- I do remember seeing a friend of mine, but other than that, no. I don't. I didn't remember. No, I when I when I first got to Hollywood, people were asking for money on on Hollywood Boulevard, and I don't. I think that's changed. Let's hope. Absolutely. Hollywood Boulevard. Right, so you guys, we got to go. We're out of time. We're two minutes already over time, so we oh, got to go. Oh, Greg, I'm so, sorry. So You're first a pleasure talking to you guys. Let's Good do Greg. it again sometime. Congratulations right? on everything and all your successes and your future successes, King Lear. There's a really big one. We want to thank you so much for coming on the show. We'll see you on Facebook, and thank You're you. You're a great guest, and maybe one day we'll play brothers in a movie. Wouldn't that be fun? Not a bad idea. Let's do it. I love it. Thank Let's you so much. It. All right, everybody, we'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thank you so much. Thanks to our guests, Jameson Newlander and Greg Malavy, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Have a good weekend. Yeah, we in the mix. Yeah, we in the mix. It's another episode. Here we go. The Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Interviewing the hottest, newest, and truest of today's celebrities. Make sure to subscribe so you can get notified weekly. Jimmy Star, he's the king of cool. Ron Russell, he's a gorgeous dude. Chat room is live and you would be a fool not to vibe with us at the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Come watch it live on W4CY Radio. Miss some past episodes? Download on iTunes. The Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. It's the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Oh.